This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. Jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun, and remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the History of Bad Ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 218, a history podcast. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm uh, your non-historian professor, Blake. I am the power bottom, Jim. And with us uh, again this week, movie critic, and sometimes gets Oscar picks right, Scab Jeff is here. Welcome, Scab. Thank you for having me again. Welcome. You look very nice in your uh, suit, so I appreciate that. Your sports jacket. Uh, I'm just slowly dialing it down for my tuxedo on Sunday. I heard about that. How much was your tuxedo? It was, well, the price tag said $9. For the but, tux. But it was 50% off day at Goodwill, so oh. $4.50 for my tux. That is a well-priced tuxedo. Just look at the way he dresses. He just exudes class. He does. He does. He does. I think the baldness really makes him feel official. Then, we, then, then I feel pretty official, too. You just look like you're Jewish. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> See, with me, I have the Jerry Rice receding hairline. I'm about ready to do cornrows in the back here. I don't understand this bald talk stuff. That's right. You look like you have a, a mop on your head. That's fine. Can it's I have natural. It? <laughs> Can I have it? <laughs> Meanwhile, Blake over here, he looks all nice and smooth with his hair. Nice grease back. I like it. I have product. Ooh, what's your hair. product? Bacon grease? Semen. No. Oh. <laughs> Where are the lady from Sports Clips? She put semen Con in me into hair? buying. Oh. So you go to Sports Clips, so you spend $15 on your haircut. No, and then $27 on product. <laughs> I haven't bought shampoo in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah, they do that scalp massage, and she had nails, and she was like, you want to buy this stuff? I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> so is sports clip like I would say the middle age strip club? Like you have officially gone from the twenty something, you're a twenty something going to the strippers, thirty somethings. Now you hit the forties, you just go to the sports cl- uh, clips because they rub your hair. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, that's what I figured. It does feel good. Does it feel does. Good. It does. And you get a sh- you can get a shoulder massage too. What? Yes. At the strip club or sports club? Sports club. Oh, can, okay. can you get a happy ending with it? I I I tried. They said no. Uh, yes, they put a warm <laughs> towel on your face. I'm not allowed at that location anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or any of them. <laughs> or any of them. No, the franchise. The, the computers don't connect. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our medical records in America. <laughs> I, I just as long as I stay out of sports clips in Milford, I'm fine. <laughs> what? Why is your arm missing, sir? Don't you have this in the medical report? No. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, moving on. Well, starting, I guess. Uh, Je- Scam Jeff is going to talk about the Oscars and his predictions in just a little bit in the News of the Geek. So that's good. We're, we got that to look forward to. Uh, Je- Blake, you were not here last week. No, I was not. Your uh, radio co-host, the Dip Man, was here. It was. It was the Dip Man. Crazy in the morning without his co-host. Going nuts and crazy because he's the Dip Man. 
yeah, so Dipman yeah. did say that you were a little bit of a diva on this morning show. Uh, sure. So just want to let you know. Um, uh, just to let you guys know, I don't listen when I'm not on the podcast. I don't listen either. It doesn't. It doesn't feed my self. You know, feeding Worth. ego. Yeah, Girl. exactly. Okay. Now I feel bad. I was I, the first one to not listen when I was on the, <laughs> <laughs> when I wasn't talking. Oh, we're all trendy around here. <laughs> hey, who broke my Batman symbol? That would be your Ditman co-host. <laughs> God damn it! He you know he is pretty violent. He is a violent man in the radio show. When I'm not there, he breaks things. He gets upset. Sorry about that. You should see what he does to the green room when he's by himself. Has he ever grabbed Taylor Swift's ass, though? On several occasions. You can't say Taylor Swift. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. The person we should not speak of, part two. uh, That's that's why she started suing people. Yes, that is true. We're not allowed to talk about her face. Her. 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 (laughs) But we can talk about her ass, but not about her personally. That's right. Because she would get mad. Uh, let's see. She here. might write a song about us. Ooh. She already did. I can't wait for the, the next <laughs> Ditman song to come out. <laughs> did you say song or schlong? <laughs> Both. Both. <laughs> I think he meant to say song. <laughs> Freudian slip. So uh, I went and saw Red Sparrow this weekend. Caw, caw. Caw. Ooh, 40 minutes in. Did you see J-Law naked? Yes. God. Did you see it? No, but I've heard it. What about at one hour and 43 minutes? She's naked again? Uh, yeah. Well, here's the best part. I didn't know what the movie was about, and I didn't <laughs> know there was nudity, and I was fine with it. I went to the noon showing on did, Friday. Did you, weren't you the one that told us last week that there was nudity? Well, I knew there was nudity, but I didn't know what nudity. So, and I didn't know how much. <laughs> he was hoping for male Russian nudity. No, uh, there was male Russian the J- nudity. The Jay Law nudity. J- Jennifer Lawrence nudity caught him by surprise. I was like, oh, no, boobs. Show me, show, show me penis. I was like, waiting for the Jude Law uh, nakedness. <laughs> Too bad he wasn't in it. Wiener, wiener. Oh, there was wieners wiener, in it. There was floppy penises. Wiener. There was floppies. Prosthetic or? <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't get a close enough look. Or strap-ons. But I was Were in... they blue? No, there was not Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> so I, I went Compared to the... Compared to a Serbian film. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. <laughs> I went to the noon show, and I was the youngest person there by 30 years, so that made me feel good. Uh, it was a little awkward seeing all the nudity. <laughs> what was it, Trump voter special? <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel like your parents were there the whole no, time yeah. with all the older people there? How many people Matt were wearing <laughs> trench coats? <laughs> <laughs> Matinee for Trump's supporters. <laughs> so I went in. I had no idea what it was about. I knew it was a spy movie, but that was it. Uh, it was not Black Widow-like. There's not much action to it, which is fine. Uh, it were, was. Were you put on the uh, Putin's uh, anti... <laughs> <laughs> anti-voter list. I can't con- I can't say that. Oh. <laughs> but I will say, I, I sat there, and like the first 40 minutes, there is a whole lot of fucking nudity and sex in it. And I'm like... That's what fucking nudity is, Yes, right? thank you. And I was watching it, and I'm going, oh, I did not expect this. I wasn't offended. And then, Ju- and then I was going to say Jude Law. Jennifer Lawrence gets naked. Yeah. And um, makes a provocative... Um, uh, gesture. You mean provocative? a prerogative? Provocative or prerogative? Prerogative. Anyways. <laughs> a provocative. prerogative. She uh, spreads her legs. Whoa! Oh, yeah, you don't see everything. What? And, obviously, because it's not porn. She's got a gherkin. <laughs> She's hairy <laughs> Russians. But I will say. Gherkin. Gher- gher- <laughs> she has, like, a pickle? I mean, a merkin. <laughs> okay, a merkin. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Well, it could be a gherkin buried in the merkin. <laughs> it's a sweet and sour. And I was like, oh, hello. Well, this is the, t- I like this now. Mm. Uh, it was very well done, though, outside the movie, <laughs> which is a great thing. I like this now. Note to sell. <laughs> Buy a DVD. So how long after the movie did you have to sit there before you had to, before you got up and walk? Uh, I, I'm proud of it. So I just got up. <laughs> <laughs> they were lucky. Look, I, had, I can still get this up. <laughs> <laughs> they were lucky I still got pants on. Look all you Trump voters. I can still get an erection without Viagra. Uh, there was a lot of people making out, a lot of 70-year-olds, so that was nice. Uh, that was hot. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so awesome. if you uh, – the Red Sparrow, uh, besides the nudity, which is nice, uh, it was a very – it was like a 1990s-type uh, spy movie. Not much action, but very well done. That's what I, I heard. I was told there's no likable characters in it. I don't disagree with you on that. I mean, so, like, Lawrence most shows on likable? Bravo – yeah. <laughs> what about <Most>. lustable? <laughs> All shows on Broadway. What about lustable characters? There are plenty of lustable yes, characters. Yes, there was. Yeah, there for man, men and women. All right. 
Uh, it was Ju- uh, Jude Law. Damn it! What Jennifer about Lawrence. the 68 other genders? Down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> Russian is not gender. They're just mean. To you. That's, thank you. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Lawrence did a really good job, though, with it. Uh, I mm. enjoyed she, uh, her she character. Did. Uh, who the hell has a phone on? Turn it Mute off. Mute your phone. <laughs> uh, but it was, if you're looking for a spy movie, it was very well done. I would recommend it. There are some things that were predictable on it. You're like, oh, because the whole point is you're trying to find the mole that's helping America. Chevy Chase. I'll try and find the mole on Jennifer Lawrence. Stop it. Uh, so that was a little that, predictable. Right there on the face. Molly, no, molly, 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 molly. It was kind of odd that she kept getting a stick to her face. She, they just kept putting a stick like in Austin Powers. Mm. But no, it was a good movie. Uh, I would recommend it. If, you know, plus it cost me $5.75 because I was at the first showing of the day. I r- forgot about that. Matinee prices are great, and then Tuesday prices are good. Was Tuesday prices? Half off. Really? Yes. Yeah, that's nice. At most theaters, not all of them. Uh, I did, uh, I was intrigued. I just, uh, there was one person that was... Uh, probably around my age. I, I, I digress there. Uh, everyone else was about 80. There was one guy in front of me, and he was skinnier than me, and he had the extra large bucket of popcorn, and I was kind of intrigued by this when there wasn't nudity on the movie screen, and he did finish almost all of it. I was quite impressed with that. And then the movie started? Yes. Because yeah. that's what happens to me when I buy popcorn. You eat all the popcorn first? Yeah. yeah Before the movie that. starts. I can see that. Yeah. So, but yeah, go see Red Sparrow if you have time. Mm. Gab Jeff, anything you've seen lately? Any movies? Uh, he saw a ton of movies. <laughs> I, I've been been, watch, oh, been watching watching right. all the the Oscar movies. I saw I Tanya was really good. Was it? Where it did was, you find that at? It was streaming on uh, Pornhub. Is what I watch it. Okay. Um, I saw Faces Places. That's on Pornhub. <laughs> 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 Which was really really good. Um, what was your least favorite Oscar movie this year? One best knowledge. picture of the best pictures. It might have been Shape of Water. It really might have been. Uh, the, let's see here. What are they? Call Me By Your Name, definitely not. That was great. Uh, Darkest Hour and Shape of Water were probably on par. Uh, the Post was probably on par with those. So those three were the bottom three, I think. Darkest Hour and Shape of or Darkest Hour and the Post was the ones that I had no desire to see. They weren't bad by any means, but yeah, they weren't nearly on the caliber of the other ones. I did fall asleep watching the Darkest Hour last night, but I started it at four a.m. So you fell asleep at the Darkest Hour seven a.m. It was still two hours left. <laughs> but, About four thirty. The makeup was spectacular. Makeup right? was spectacular. That was not Gary Oldman. It did not look like <laughs> Gary Oldman. Are we allowed to talk about Gary Oldman? Because he abuses people, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Uh, what, like Kobe Bryant? Allegedly. Fuck you, Kobe. Allegedly. Fuck you. Allegedly, Jason fucks Sorry. Kobe Bryant. W- was Dear Basketball your least favorite movie nominated for any Academy Award this year? It could have been. It really could have been. It was really awful. You can watch it on YouTube. It's six minutes long. Turn it on right now. Pause pause the podcast. (laughs) Turn it on right now. Watch it. No. Okay, yeah. It's terrible. (laughs) That was awful. Just saw it. That was awful. (laughs) Awful. Was it just about his life? No, it was his retirement letter. He was saying his retirement letter, and then somebody who looks like they animate a BMW commercial was drawing a little kid trying to throw... A basketball? uh, Rolled up socks into a garbage can, because that's what he was talking about in his retirement letter or whatever. And then then they kind of morphed that into him playing basketball or whatever. It was dumb. It was bad. it It was clearly the worst of the four. So what you're saying is that uh, next year Ray Lewis is eligible to win an Oscar. Is that the the country music singer? No, you go from alleged rapist to alleged murderer. Who's Ray Lewis? A uh, linebacker from the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, I was thinking thinking of Ray Stevens. It doesn't matter how many people you killed as long as you tackle a lot of people. Okay. Yeah. Unless your name's Ray Carruth, because he didn't tackle anybody. <laughs> he just got busted for trying to hire somebody to assassinate his girlfriend. Allegedly. Oh, no, he was convicted. Oh, Never wait, mind. sorry. Yeah, we don't say allegedly. Or maybe he'll get the Oscar next year. You mi- <laughs> <laughs> I 
it's a documentary he about might him be able to because he's being released from jail right you're right it's a documentary about how he's such a good father and is taking care of his son <laughs> well, dear, of, him, of him trying to get custody <laughs> yes he's called dear car trunk <laughs> <laughs> I miss you so <laughs> I miss you you failed me so because for those who don't know Go just go look it up. Oh no, we <laughs> talked about this last week. We talked about you how did? he was Ray a miserable. Yes. yes, about you did? how he's a miserable human being. If you would have listened, you would have known that. <laughs> oh, you don't even listen when you're on. <laughs> did you just become the dog from the uh, an- the uh, Anna Barbarian? Yeah. <laughs> no. Now you just sound like you're dying, like the old man and up. You're right there. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Anything else you guys want to talk about? I have a couple ups this week. Okay, what's your up? Uh, my ups, uh, it's, I sent the link uh, on Twitter, I think, to, about the buttress. The yes. mattress or the pillow <laughs> is shaped like a butt. <laughs> Explain this. Is it actually a real item? Yes, it is. It's on Kickstarter. Yeah, uh, I saw it. Somebody's trying to get it up. I saw it on the Joel McHale show. He, he, he brought it up. Because Actually, the Kickstarter was successful and ended, but you can still pre-order it today. <laughs> uh, because of you, Jim, I did watch uh, Joel McHale's new show, the first two episodes. <laughs> that was identical to the soup. Oh, it's that identical to the exactly... soup. And when he makes fun of uh, the after show on <laughs> Good uh, Today, or uh, the Today Show after Campy show Lee. with Donna Adorable. <laughs> yes. How is that her real name? It's not her real name. Okay, thank God. That, this week they talk about how it's not her real name. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you're missing the soup, uh, yeah, just watch Joel McHale show <laughs> on Netflix. It was very well. It was, it, I picked it up. I'm like, I feel like I haven't missed an episode. Yeah. Uh, the other a movie I saw, I saw Pitch Perfect three. And and DJ Khalid is in it. Ooh. And no <laughs> one absolutely just screams his name. I was highly disappointed. Not in even that. Rebel Wilson. No. <laughs> Did she shit in a sink? No. No. Okay. Uh, then my down for the week, the NB, the NCAA selection show on how they're changing it. What are they changing? They are going to announce the 68 teams that are in the tournament first and then announce what seeds they are and what brackets they're in. So this is going to be like a six-hour show? They say they're going to try and get it in the first 45 minutes, but we know how that's going to go. It, let's take something that's worked for years and everybody loves it and let's change it. So that's like if you're the Oscars, here's all the movies nominated, and then we're going to put them in categories. <laughs> Boss would... Baby's up for Best Picture, maybe. Maybe. maybe? Oh, it didn't make Best it's Picture. It's animated <laughs> Best Picture. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> Star Wars Last Jedi's up for a, mo- best, uh, for a movie award. What is it? Makeup. Damn. <laughs> No one was Kobe not Bryant's makeup. up for best director. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. it's animated short. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you see, the NCAA is taking a page out of politics. You know, changing things up when uh, you know want to divert attention from the real scandal. Uh, the issue is that uh, only certain people can vote in certain states, so it's kind of difficult now with the so NCAA. So my question is: Then Sounds what order exactly are they? Like NCAA. <laughs> what order are they releasing them in? Are they going to do like alphabetical? I, they'll probably do one through sixty-eight, and then they'll tell you. I'll tell you your seed, though. I, I don't know yeah. what they're going to do. It's, why change something that works that every that all college basketball fans, like I'd say 99% of it, love the format they have now? Or at least are used to it, so yeah. it works. So the idea is just turn it, tune in to the internet at 701 and just get your bracket then? Yes. Okay, good call. Thank well, you, NCAA. What were they doing before? They would release it uh, by... Uh, Comfort, or... Uh, by region. Uh, region. By region, yeah. So they, 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 they the well, number one seed in the West, they, they, they release the number one seeds first. And these are the four number one seeds. And then they go, in the West region is, and they, whoever the one seed is, and they go through that. And then they go Midwest, South, East. and I suppose this way you find out right away if your team is not in before you find out where they might be. Well, two of the last three years, the last team they announced was Xavier. So we were a little nervous. <laughs> You think they'll get in this year? I, I maybe <laughs> they have maybe. a chance. Uh, the worst thing that'll happen for Xavier is they get a number one seed. No, that'll be the best thing. Mm. They're not going to lose to mm. a sixteen. <laughs> I will put a hundred to one odds on that. <laughs> <laughs> every year, I, every year, I would love. I keep room for Kentucky when they get number one seed to lose to a sixteen. That's all I want. Damn we, Kentucky fans. The the hundred to one odds was a joke that happened at the uh, Oscar uh, ceremony, mm-hmm. where we were discussing the uh, best supporting actress, 
And I said, ooh, this is usually where, like, the surprise comes from, like the person you don't expect to win. And Jeff said, I will give you 100 to 1 odds that Allison Janney is going to win. So Jim took him up on it. <laughs> And you did not win. I, I lost my dollar. <laughs> he, he put a dollar on the floor. I put a hundred dollar bill on the floor. <laughs> and I was a lot more nervous than I should have been because Allison Janney was pretty much a shoe in. <laughs> so I really liked that hundred dollar bill. <laughs> That's what she said. You could have bought ten tuxes. <laughs> no, I, Twenty of them. <laughs> Twenty. Sorry, my man is half off. <laughs> or one hundred tuxedo t shirts. Ooh. That's just as good as a real mm-hmm. tux. That's what I was sporting on Sunday. <laughs> well, I will say the NCAA has been knocking out of the ballpark with everything this year. Uh, they've had no issues, uh, no controversies. <laughs> so Not at all. I mean, I mean it, it's a well-run organization. It is. It is. Uh, is it better or worse than FIFA? Mm. FIFA? Oh, at, it's not as bad as FIFA. FIFA's at least outright saying they're, they're awful. Oh, okay. I mean, FIFA agrees that, yeah, we uh, elect people to run our organization who pretty much tell us they're going to take bribes and rip you off. They pretty much announce that, yeah, we're corrupt. Uh, well, I, the I'm NCAA, corrupt there's nothing the you can do still about says, it. We're protecting the amateur athlete. Meanwhile, I just made a billion dollars. Oh, so, so they're as corrupt as we are on, on uh, handing out floppies. Yes, uh, yes. We, we, we'll let you know that, yes, we will take every bribe you want to send us, and Scav Jeff is not going to win one. Correct. <laughs> Correct. We are as good as the Golden Globes. We have as much credibility as the I Golden Globes. We've got more. That's true. That's true. We, we might. We might. Well, people actually know what our organization is. That's true. Nobody I mean, knows what the, the, the uh, Hollywood foreign, foreign press, press is. <laughs> um, my down this week is a six-hour pre-show of the Oscars. Uh, it started at 2 p.m., the red carpet. You watched it? No, I was flipping through the channels, and I'm like, 2 p.m.? I was like, what the hell is going on here? There's oh, a, no, six and a half hour pre-show. There's an easy way to avoid that. Not watch it? Exactly. I did it. I, I watched it. I put on my tuxedo, and I watched <laughs> it all by myself in the house. <laughs> I mean, where else are you going to get your science and political views? Time out. <laughs> You're a sad, lonely man. Where, where, where am I going to learn my, my designers for, for dresses? I'm, uh, you yeah. don't need designers for dresses. I'll just give you two-sided nipple tape. Jeff? Scab Jeff? This divorce is hitting you hard. I think you need a hobby. I think you need this a is hobby. This hobby. It was. It's ah. over now. And now you're empty now for the I, next ten months. Now I just cry. <laughs> We're all 50 weeks. Blake, just to let you know, uh, Scab Jeff, uh, as much as I thought it was a joke, he actually is getting a divorce. Uh, we found that out last week. Oh, yeah. I feel kind of like an ass. Yeah, I heard about it. She was at the Oscar party. Your ex-wife? <laughs> yeah. Well, my soon-to-be ex-wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and your soon-to-be girlfriend? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jim, was your girlfriend there? Yes. Yeah, you're here. <laughs> okay. Jeff, you too? Oh, I know. Yes. No. No. Oh. <laughs> Talk in front of her kisses. <laughs> so, uh, anybody else have an up-down? I've got an up. What's up? I won the Oscar poll. Well, look at you go. How many movies have you seen this year? Uh, that were nominated? Yes. Two. Okay, great job. <laughs> they were nominated for Best Visual Effects. Ooh. Yeah. Did what? you copy off of what I said on the, the podcast last week and then just change one of them so you would win with that one? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I beat Jeff by one because I picked a different best picture than him. Aww. <laughs> we'll get to his picks, too, in a little bit here. <laughs> we'll get to them. Actually, you know what? We can do that real na- real quick now. Let's do that. Forget the Twitter it. pool. Uh, the Twitter poll of the week was whip, at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter. We're also on the History of Bad Ideas on Facebook. Uh, what percentage of Oscar picks will Scab Jeff get right? I, I picked more than 75% on the Twitter poll. Well, the po- options were less than 25%, less than 50%, 50 to 75%, a.k.a. no chance, and more than 75%, ha, 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 ha. 42% said 50 to 75%. But they did have some... Some faith in him. Yes, they did. <laughs> but not nearly enough. Obviously, 24% <laughs> said more than 75%. Um, uh, so, uh, 17% posted at less than 25 and less than 50%. Uh, they must have listened two years ago when you had 34%. So. Well, it, it must have been a pretty easy year if... Uh, Damn, Jeff is right. No, if Jeff picked uh, 21 of 24 right, That's pretty with only yeah. seeing two movies that are up for like 
uh, <laughs> best uh, <laughs> visual effects. By this point, we know we don't pick the ones that we think should win. No, no. <laughs> We're smart enough not to pick our favorite movies. Dear Basketball won. <laughs> yeah. I knew it would win. I picked it to win. Blake, did you get your political uh, assignments from the Holly- from the Oscars? Do you know what you're talking about now, the political hot topics? Yes, I get all my political views from celebrities. Okay, good call. Good call. I, I I love that there was in the Oscars. It's the year of the woman. They're talking about all the Me Too mm-hmm. and all that. And the guy they have hosting it used to be on a show where they had girls jumping on trampolines. And no one saw that as a problem. <laughs> no, no. Adam Carolla hosted? <laughs> no, he has a career. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. He, he has a career. Oh, he's in podcasting. No, Adam Carolla, he does, uh, he, he, he uh, has a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he does houses. He's a... Uh, oh, yeah, he does. Yeah, hold on a second. He so does a podcast nice. and get paid millions. I don't know if he gets paid we millions. We do a podcast and get IOUs. <laughs> Just as good as money. <laughs> <laughs> but not even millions worth of IOUs. Uh, no, I, I have a million worth of IOUs now. <laughs> I get Pez and Dum Dums. <laughs> and we haven't gotten any Pez in a while. <laughs> we haven't gotten any Pez in a while. I, I, did, I brought that last week. Oh, yeah. Can somebody <laughs> send us some Pez? Okay, Jeff. Scab Jeff. Let's do your Oscar picks. Short film animated. I picked Dear Basketball. And the winner was Dear Basketball. An Scab- alleged rapist. Yes. Powerball, oh, wait, can you uh, mark down how many you got right now? Yes. Okay. Wait, hold on. He paid her off. Scab Jeff did? No. Or Kobe? No, well, he... <laughs> he, is, he is for women's rights. Uh, visual effects. Uh, Scab Jeff, what was your pick? Blade Runner 2049. That was the correct answer as well. About time something, Blade Runner won something. Didn't win the box office. Uh, let's see here. Uh, animated feature. Please tell me you picked the boss baby. I picked Coco. And Coco won. Even though I didn't see it. And, uh, Breadwinner was actually real good. Loving Vincent looked like shit. We, we actually did... Really? Yeah, I had no desire. Okay. I thought it, at least the one clip I saw that they showed on the Oscars it intrigued me enough to maybe search it out. It looked like it would be a good animated short. That's about it. Oh, yeah. That's not a short, was it? No. That was a full movie. Oh, that might movie. be tough to watch then. No, but I'm apparently imagine. there were like 20,000 oil paintings that they had to do. Like, yes. they actually did oil <laughs> paintings, and they took photographs of it to animate it. But, That's impressive. I'll give them that. And it's one of the highest grossing, like... Polish films ever made. Loving Vincent? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I, I will say we did, uh, at the Oscar party, create a special rule just for this category. Mm-hmm. If you pick Boss Baby and Boss Baby 1, you get credit for five wins. <laughs> I like that rule. I like that rule. Nobody it, picked it. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't win. <laughs> if that movie won. Your look at I mean, is it better than Ferdinand, though? I heard decent things about Ferdinand. It's probably slightly better than Ferdinand. I did see Boss Baby because it was streaming for free on Netflix. <laughs> did your son like it? I would did not, he watch it? I would not force him to watch Good that, call. No. <laughs> so you watched it by yourself? I watched it by myself. Because it was Oscar nominated? Because it was. I, I tried to get as many as I could. I got all but 13. Was it better or worse than a Serbian film? <laughs> <laughs> I would rather that. watch it again than the Serbian film, but it was clearly an inferior film to the <laughs> Serbian film. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, adapted screenplay. What did you pick? Call Me By Your Name. And that is what it won. So you're three for, or four for four now? Yeah. I thought it was Call Me Maybe. Hey, don't make fun of that song. Which was... <laughs> Love that song. I was, you would. Ex- I was totally Call expecting me. Call Me By Your Name to be the one that I had to suffer through this year and I'm, I was going to hate. But it was a spectacular movie, and it was it was very good. It was a very, very good movie. I think it's actually on expected. Amazon right now. It's I think well it's... worth watching. Uh, original screenplay. Except for the apricot scene. <laughs> <laughs> is it like the girls' uh, girls night out, or girls' uh, weekend, or whatever that is? They uh, have a scene with a pineapple, and or a grapefruit and a penis. Well, he comes in the apricot, and then the other guy eats the apricot. Is that why I haven't seen the other movie? <laughs> no, we're live on Twitter right now. <laughs> hey, not. No, we didn't know that. Thanks for informing us. <laughs> Wait, hold on. How does he fit in an apricot to arrive to his location? He takes the pit out. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Blake's going home to get some apricots on the way home. <laughs> uh, let's see. Original screenplay. Uh, what did you pick? Get out. 
And that is what's won. Get <laughs> out. I'm glad Jordan Peele won. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, actress in a supporting yeah. role. Who did yeah. you pick? <laughs> yes, I put $100 on Anison Janney against $1 for the field. <laughs> and Allison Janney won. I'm glad. She was awesome in uh, 10 Things I Hate About You. <laughs> I'm a cat. She was the guidance counselor. I don't even remember her from there. That's the first I thing I thought of when my wife goes, Dear God. <laughs> she was great in like everything she does, even crappy sitcoms. Do you, have you seen Mom? Yes. Is it bad? Yeah. Is it? And it, it, I like the two leads. Yeah, I, I like the actors, but the writing is not good. Not good. Uh, let's see here. Actor in a supporting role. Who did you pick? Sam Rockwell. That is who won. That's impressive. You're uh, batting 100 here. Uh, uh, that'd be 1,000. Whatever. Uh, I 100%. Did like, I did like Sam Rockwell wanted the jet ski, though. You're batting 1.000. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, let's see. Actress in a leading role. Who did you pick? I picked Frances McDormand. That is pretty much everybody, I think. That was the odds on favorite, right? Yes. Yeah. Is okay. that because of Fargo? It, it, she won it because of Fargo. It had okay. nothing to do with the three billboards. She won it because of Fargo. I actually completely forgot she was in Fargo until they she announced She is Fargo. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was, did you watch. see the movie? Well, she I, was it. <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> uh, actor in a leading role, uh, you picked Denzel, right? I didn't. I picked Gary. Gary Oldman did win for that as well. Uh, I probably would have put $100 on that one as well. <laughs> uh, let's see here. And best director. Who did you pick? Guillermo del Toro. I'm glad he won. I'm glad he won. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shape, of, Shape of Water wasn't that great a movie, and Paul Thomas Anderson's spectacular. Oh. Christopher Nolan deserves to, to finally win one of these. He should have won for interest. Greta Gerwig is a woman, so she's obviously superior to everyone else in the field. Wait, is she a redhead? Uh, I don't no, know. No, she's blonde. She could be whatever are you, you want. Are be. you sure? She was blonde at the Oscars. <laughs> well, she came to your Oscar the party. Redheads can color their hair. Uh, well, <laughs> she was a blonde at the Oscars. Okay. When she directed Lady Bird, we do not know what color her hair was. Okay. Pink. Then uh, she would deserve it more than Guillermo as well. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, Guillermo has the best hair. He has your hair. <laughs> and your beard. <laughs> Are was, you Guillermo del Toro? <laughs> I was told I was uh, okay to not wear a tux to the event uh-huh. since I looked like Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you were the only one not wearing a Guillermo tux. Guillermo del Toro. A tux or a dress, yes. <laughs> uh, let's see here. And finally, best picture. No, he's, he's uh, Guillermo del Husqvarna. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, a joke that went south. <laughs> <laughs> Husqvarna is a competitor of Toro in the tool business. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> Jason doesn't know about tools. Oh, I'm looking at one. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, where's Dip Man? I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> miss him already. Uh, best picture. What did you pick? Three billboards. Oh, did that win? No. Oh, there is your miss. And I and I and he picked uh, Shape of Water, uh, Jeff. Yes, I picked Shape Jeff of picked, Water. Uh, Shape of Water. Okay, so what going into the uh, move into the Oscars? What was the odds on favor for Best Picture? Because rumor was Get Out was moving up in the rankings. Oh, well, the the list I looked at when I was making my selections had uh, Shape of Water. Call? No, it no. had three, three billboards. billboards. But just a slight favorite over Shape of Water. Th- those were the two that were lower than a one-to-one. Uh, if you place an online Vegas bet, uh, three billboards would have been the the favorite. But very slight. closely, closely followed by Shape of Water it was like eleven to ten versus one to one. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And then closely followed by Get Out because Get if out. it went from if it went to like the fourth ballot. And nobody could decide between the three billboards and the shape of water. They were thinking that people would gravitate toward Get Out. Um, did La La Land win this year? Did they bring uh, it back? I think it had a better chance of them announcing it at mm-hmm. first than Darkest Hour. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> was Darkest Hour not good? No, it was a good movie, but Bad it picture. had no chance of winning. I think it was 201 odds in Vegas. <laughs> uh, Blake? Hmm. Uh, you have a story about uh, the shape of water. 
It has helped what industry? Can you please explain? Dildos. Yes. Uh, I guess there was a scene of masturbation in it with the dildo. Is that correct? Uh, no. no. Oh, what was it? I just saw that you, the article. It's based upon the uh, phallus of the fish man. Oh, please explain. It I, looks like a I really dildo. can't. <laughs> I haven't seen the movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a pretty good description. There's a fish man in the movie. You're aware of yes, this, right? Yes. It's like a uh, creature from the Black Lagoon, mm-hmm. except for love stories. And you know what a phallus is, right? Yes, I know what a phallus is. Thank you. And phallus of the fish man. I, I don't know how better to explain it. Okay. So, so they actually, actually, do they actually show the fish man's phallus? They do not. Oh. So it's up to imagination. But, she, but she, she's mute, but she does sign language, and she pretty effectively explains how when he's naked, you can't see it, but then there's the... Uh, uh, opening? An opening, and, and but it, the phallus comes out, and... I, I so I'm this. glad it won. Yeah, that is correct. Doug Jones, the oh, according to the news story in Uproxx, Doug Jones, the actor under all of that fish makeup, lamented last month, quote, after pouring my heart, soul, blood, sweat, and tears into this romantic, beautiful, magical role, the last thing I want to be remembered for is this silicone appendage that comes in two sizes. <laughs> two sizes, even. Yes, you can get two sizes of the <laughs> Flaccid and erect. <laughs> That's actually how some of the people, I, when I was watching Red yeah. Sparrow, came out. Oh, my God. Yeah. What the hell was that? <laughs> the picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guillermo is, uh, del Toro explaining it. has okay. also gone on saying that the dildo is not accurate. In February, he said, quote, I don't think it's an accurate representation. It's some form of fan art, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess. So on you porn this year, there's going to be a fish category. And he goes on to say, I'm sure Dunkirk doesn't have that problem. <laughs> 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 so is Doug Jones uh, typecast now as the uh, fish? fish? They did say it would make sense. This is the uh, prequel to Abe Sapien. Abe Sa- Sapien? Sapien. Sapien yeah. from Hellboy. Yeah. Out is he related to Homo Sapien? Yes. Yeah. Notice I had to say the full word or else people would get offended. We would get along. Oh, we're still offended, but that's oh. because it was a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Dip Man? <laughs> Like killed him, didn't you? <laughs> He's tearing up the green room. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did a great job this year, Scab Jeff. This might this is your best year yet. On on the categories we we listed, mm-hmm. he he got uh, ten of eleven right. On his ballot at home, he answered twenty of twenty four right. That's not bad. That's not bad. I miss stupid docu- documentaries. <laughs> I miss documentary short, documentary feature, and live action short. Hey, those are the three I missed. <laughs> But you got Best Picture. I got Best Picture. Why did you pick Shape of Water? I actually thought, based on just what I hear people talk mm-hmm. about between those two movies, I had a feeling Shape of Water was going to pull it out. Okay. And, he saw and the, I didn't want to put exactly the same that And job. he saw the prosthetic phallus sales and online. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yes. Thank you, Scab Jeff. And um, I figured if Guillermo del Toro was going to win, they'd vote for his movie, too. Okay. So next year, people are going to start listening to this and then start actually placing bets in, on you. in Vegas on my picks. They should. They should. I have to admit, you're no longer a joke with these pre- predictions. <laughs> you put in the hours, you put in the work, and now you're 10 for 11 here. And this year I got all but 13 films, which is by far a record. That is pretty impressive. I think I hit a record this year, too. I saw two of all <laughs> films. Was Black Panther up? No, that'll be <laughs> next year. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, so thank you, Scab Jeff. You're going to sit with us here, and uh, let's do some listener feedback. Now it's time for the bomb listener feedback. Who's our sponsor this week? Oh, get in touch with your inner self. With Oscar winner, <laughs> Shape of Water, oh. <laughs> Sexual AIDS. How much are they? I don't know. Forty nine ninety five. There you oh. go. <laughs> Jim knows. For the first one. The other one. For the big. The yeah. small one's uh, forty four ninety five. Good call. Well, if you're going for that, you might as well go for the big then. Duh. Go big or go home. <laughs> That's right. So it is listener feedback, and this is the favorite time of the podcast to mm-hmm. thank everybody who's listening and then apologize. And then write a review on iTunes, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Keek Life Radio, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central every Friday. Tangent Bound Network, we're on. Tangent. Uh, Danger Entertainment. Danger, Danger Entertainment. Uh, and nerdly.co.uk. Long Hello, up. Governor. Hello, Becca. You cheeky cunts. 
Anyone else? Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> articles are out there too, uh, so just take a look. Black Lightning review, game review. Yeah. Uh, articles. We are all- a and and the. <laughs> and we're also on. <laughs> iHeartRadio, please listen to us quickly on iHeartRadio because they're going bankrupt today. Yeah. Well, and we're on Spotify. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We didn't mean to bankrupt iHeartRadio. <laughs> but you know what? If we're going down, we're taking them with us. Hey, the problem is all these outstanding guys who used to have to us. <laughs> <laughs> they try to pay their bills and IOUs. <laughs> the problem with iHeartRadio is they have shitty radio oh, no. stations. You know, Except for us. <laughs> we're not a radio. I'm talking about like actual radio stations. Oh, okay. Actually, like, actually, they sold all their Bitcoin and bought Hobie IOUs. <laughs> <laughs> now they're all bankrupt. <laughs> we apologize, I hurt radio. So does Hobie IOUs count as cryptocurrency? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just as good as Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you can't start off listener feedback without starting off with Doug. Number one fan. A-Pants. Formerly known as? Uh, anal glands? No. Oh. Can't give yourself a No, that's who it is. Thank you. <laughs> Doug says, what do you think of the movie Uncle Drew? Is that the sequel to Uncle Buck? No. <laughs> Explain, <laughs> Powerball. NBA players as old guys. Uh, is Shaq that good of an actor? Oh, there you go. Kyrie yeah. Irving, isn't it? Kyrie Irving, Shaq, uh, there's one, there's one of the, fe- uh, is it Lisa Leslie? Yeah, she's in it. Um, is she a horse? Stop it! Oh, sorry. Down the hall. That's not Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> you will not come on this show and make fun of Lisa Leslie. Sarah Jessica Parker is the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew. And Anthony Anderson. Uh, he's just an asshole. Yeah, but they, uh, <laughs> pretty much the movie's about uh, they're going to get a basketball team up to play in, uh, I guess it's like the Rocker Park uh, mm-hmm. basketball tournament, the street ball tournament, and... Uh, Shaq's character is out there just schooling a bunch of people, and they say, you should get a team together. And he said, as long as I can bring pick my team, and, and they're all old people. And bring the general? <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> so it's basically like uh, the movie they go to Vegas, Morgan Freeman and all those guys go to Vegas for one last fling, but this time they're on a basketball court. No, it's nothing like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it like white men can't jump without Rosie Lopez? Closer to that. Okay. Is it Lopez? Sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just go with that. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Was that Kevin Spacey? <laughs> Hi, guys, I'm an idiot. I didn't see anybody at the Oscars. You guys told me to go meet there. I was in Indianapolis. Is that where it's at this year? I don't understand. Where is it? I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> yeah. I apologize me. to all of the listener. I even brought two little boys out of my basement for this. Boo. Sorry. Allegedly. Boo. Allegedly. Anyways, anyways. Uh, is anyone excited about Uncle Drew? Uh, Not now. <laughs> I, I might watch it on video. VHS. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I think the people that were at the theater watching the preview with me were excited about it. I do agree. I do agree. When I went to see Black Panther, they, yeah, they were excited, weren't they? I think the people like right in front of me were like kind of giddy for it. Yeah. Scab Jeff, do you think it's up for Best Picture next year? Uh, maybe Best Animated Short. <laughs> Keep the basketball <laughs> theme. <laughs> I like it. Maybe it'll be a cost or uh, makeup. Ooh. Yeah. The makeup did look good. Yeah. You know what? Now that Le- now that Kobe's won an Oscar, guess what? LeBron's got to do now. Win two. Do you think, um, well, let's see, because Kobe is just as good in Hollywood as 3 6 Mafia and Martin Scorsese, right? <laughs> so, I feel. And Eminem. Like, hold on. And Eminem. So, Martin. And Leonardo DiCaprio. So, Scorsese and DiCaprio have the least amount of talent of those five. Okay, I could see that. I would pay Kobe Bryant to get mauled by a bear. I would pay to watch that. Well, I think, uh, yeah, Jeff really. and I were discussing Eminem actually probably deserved that Oscar. I don't disagree with that. <laughs> I'm actually not a uh, problem with 3-6 uh, Mafia. I'm, I have a problem with Scorsese winning. That guy has not done much in his life. What a hack. Oh, except for France. He, did, he did France? No, I'm getting my... Uh, That's y- Roman Polanski. Yeah, I'm getting my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my perverted directors mixed up. <laughs> 
Scorsese is in uh. just as line of a hack as Spielberg. So, I mean, they're both pretty much in the same boat. <laughs> but, but apparently Spielberg's a guy, if you're at the Oscars, you ask him if he has any weed on him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's got to be high, right? I mean, he did put his own untalented girlfriend actress in the second Indiana Jones movie, right? And wife. Yeah. Isn't that his wife now? Yes. Yeah, she yeah. came from. Oh, I just saw uh, Godfather 3. This is a little off topic, but kind of related. But Godfather 3, I just saw for the first time. Godfather 3 is dead to me. And Sofia Coppola is probably the worst. That's probably the worst performance that I have ever seen (laughs) by any actress ever. (laughs) Like, I always thought that, hey, if I ever wanted to to try to make my own movie, I could probably act in it or something. And she probably acts like I would have acted. And I could see how someone who's not like a trained actor or actress could be bad because she was that bad. It was So you're saying she was worse than Chris Klein. Oh, Whoa, worse whoa, than whoa, whoa, anything whoa. that I have ever seen. You're saying she was worse than Rosie Lopez. <laughs> it was like uh, it was like uh, they invited some teen girl off the street to come in and act, and she's like all giddy and everything when she's supposed to be in love or something. I'm glad you're reviewing a movie from the 1985. So that's good. That that's was good. 1990, but oh like, my bad. It, it only has something to do with this because it was. Francis Ford Coppola's daughter that he decided to put in after Winona, uh, uh, Winona Ryder dropped out. I, I thought you were talking about Riverdale briefly. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> that's good acting. Oh, Veronica. Compared to, apparently, uh, Sofia Coppola. Veronica. What else we got? What else we got, Blake? Oh, I thought you were going to ask. You were going <laughs> to no, talk no. about Scab Jeff about Godfather 3. <laughs> what else you got? It's dead to me. Have you watched <laughs> Platoon lately? For I have. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, next, uh, from our favorite guys up in C-Bus, uh, Home Video Hustle. Brandon and PJ? Yeah. What are some of the movies you love that everyone hates? Now, apparently, we already have answers from some other listeners. From Mark James, House Party, I love. That's what he said. Who hates House Party? Yeah, I'm about to say, I know a lot of people that love House Party. I, I always like House playing Party. kid. Kid and play. Yeah, playing kid. Good job. They're <laughs> funny young children. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny. Uh, Pam Morris. Cousin She's, Pam. That's right. She said, I enjoyed Avatar. She's the one. Not the greatest, but I will still watch it. I can't ever rewatch it. I still haven't watched it. Do they have their own line of... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, yeah, I'll watch Con Air 2 and Face Off. Great movies. Says. Those are... those. The Rock. No, those are terrible movies. Put the bunny down. You're helping my point. Put the bunny down. I suppose my answer to this question, I don't know if people necessarily hate the movie because not enough people saw it to actually judge it, Mm -hmm. but I'll say Josie and the Pussycats. Everyone seems to go, what, whenever I say it was a good movie. What about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Eh, I was a little disappointed. I wanted more out of it. Okay. Eyes Wide Shut is mine. I think that's Kubrick's best. I, I think it's by far Kubrick's best. And I think it's one of the, the greatest movies ever made, and everybody thinks it's terrible. <laughs> you know, when everyone else thinks your taste in movies is bad, maybe you should take the hint. La La Land. <laughs> no, everybody loved La La Land, no, except nobody for those loved. who didn't see it. I saw, <laughs> I saw the trailer. <laughs> Or the poster, anyway. I, saw, eh. I just needed <laughs> Jess review. <laughs> uh, the, I'll say, uh, I, I know you guys will agree that you like the movie, but it, I, everybody outside this room I talk to hates it is The Punisher. Oh, oh yeah. The, uh, with, Thomas with Thomas Jane. Jane. You know what? That's a good one. Yeah. I, I mean, that movie sucked. I'm like, I love that movie. And then the other would be The Replacements. If it's oh, on, I have one. to watch it. <laughs> Red means stop. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, yeah, I, I love The Replacements. It is Keanu Reeves' best movie. Um, Blake, what's yours? I, I, can, I couldn't think of one. Good job. Because he only likes quality films. I only like, yeah. He only likes films that everybody else likes first. That's right. And, and of course, everybody likes every film that uh, Remy LaCroix's been in. Mm. <laughs> She's been in some bad ones. <laughs> some, some bad ones have been in her, too. <laughs> but uh, Bob, uh, Did you like AI, Spielberg's best film? I did not. Okay, I was just wondering. That was with Hel- uh, Haley Joel Osment. I just remember the bear with the Haley. Yes. Haley, whatever. So, anything else uh, we got going on? 
uh, Blake, listener. All right, uh, next from <sighs> Dev, our Psy guy. He said, uh, what style of underwear best represents each host? Jeff? I think uh, Jeff would be banana hammock. That's what I was saying. <laughs> are we asking what we actually wear or what represents us? Yes. I, I think banana hammock represents Jeff. Banana hammock represents uh, I Jeff. I was going to say going commando represents Jeff. I feel like that's but... more scab Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I am totally wearing a thong right now. You want to see? <laughs> no, no, no. 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 I, you bent over. I saw your whale tail. No. Already. <laughs> no. <laughs> J- Jason Long Johns. No, it, what? Am I in Alaska? <laughs> Jason's assless chaps. What are you talking yeah. about? Are those considered underwear? That's outerwear. Both. <laughs> and maybe in your world. <laughs> well, instead of assless chaps, how about just the uh, garter and the stockings? Ooh. Ooh. It does f- fit my figure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what about Jim? Power bottom. Tidy whities Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> With All skin right. marks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Blake? You just have to ruin everything. Yeah, uh, boxer briefs. Yeah, just yeah like I can see that. You can't make up your mind. You can't go full boxer because there's not enough support. Brief is too constricting. <laughs> I can see you in briefs. That didn't sound right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? Uh, mm. oh. I feel like I'm a massage parlor. Mm. Mm. Show me that. Fish stick. Yeah. Show me that shape of your water. Mm. Uh, what is Nick's underwear? I don't know, but I'm just going to stare at you, Scab Jeff when I talk like this. All right. Yeah. Show me your llama. Mm. Nope. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Put that away. Mmm. So, what time is it? It's time for Nick Albright. It's a little happy tune. <laughs> it's not getting me in the mood. Nick Albright says, Jefferton! Hey! If you could see the future and realize that Blake's continued existence would end the world, how would you kill him? Hey, wait. Stop the music. Hashtag, uh-oh, boobs. <laughs> um... Um, Why are we killing Blake? Because his continued existence would end the world. Mm. Is the world really that good to be safe? I would probably... Uh, uh, it's, it's where all my stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Good reason. Um, I would probably, you know, ask Blake which way he'd prefer to die... And while he thought about it, poison him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Russian spy. <laughs> <laughs> that we know of. I get back. I, I can't deny your stuff. <laughs> he answered the question. Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. Well, you know, this existential stuff. He must have read, uh, what, uh, Hawking's? Michi? No, Hawking's recent uh, theory about he knows what happened before the Big Bang. I am Stephen Hawking. People think I'm smart because I talk like this. I'm not. I'm full of shit. Mm. Yep, that's Jason's impersonation. (laughs) Of Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's really bad. (laughs) (laughs) Well, why are you doing impersonations? Why don't you do Hunter McAllister's uh, listener feedback question? Uh Was I the only one who was really uncomfortable when he was doing the Stephen Hawking impression? (laughs) I was really uncomfortable with that. Why are you you uncomfortable, (laughs) Sam Jeff? We've heard it so many times, it's just... It goes yeah. right by. Yeah, the effect just felt so wrong there. <laughs> oh, it was. But yet it feels so right. We're, we're just so numb to it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Kind of like my body. What, what do you? What, what so bothers you that 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 it's so insensitive, or that it's just really, really bad? <laughs> a little bit of both. I think it was a little bit of both. <laughs> like it was equal parts each. <laughs> Like, it was a bad impression, but close enough that you could tell that he was making fun of his, uh, I, I, multiple screws. ALS. Or ALS. Diabetes. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he was saying something completely... <laughs> <laughs> Gonorrhea. <laughs> I don't know. You don't combine the two because this is what happens. I do like how I get into it. My t- mouth is even slanted on one side, too. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, as well. Oh, that's, oh, no. the, that's the source of your talent? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the dead man. Boo-hoo. Anyway, so Hunter McAllister is here. And that's probably going to be nominated for Floppy for Best Impression. <laughs> of I think it already has in the past. I don't know if it can be re I want more floppies than you. Suck it, bitch. <laughs> Suck it, bitch. Suck it, bitch. It's stuck. Uh, See, that wasn't bad. <laughs> I was okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> I could see Stephen Hawking doing that. <laughs> but, say, no. but, but saying Stephen Hawking isn't smart, that's where the offensive part came in? I don't know. There was something about the way that he was saying it that really struck a chord. <laughs> it was so, almost so bad that Jeff Morris almost got up and left the show. No. <laughs> oh, okay. I have as many divorces as you. I was just concerned that no one else seemed to bat an eye. <laughs> <laughs> like this was like normal and he was doing a great job type of thing. This is what people have to understand if they've listened to the podcast for the past two years. We are equal opportunity offenders. <laughs> Four years. <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> Wait, hold on. 52 times four. Oh, shit. Okay, this is the time... Where I actually am hoping for the Hunter McAllister impersonation <laughs> just to get past the Stephen Hawking. I can do a Hunter McAllister. Oh, God. <laughs> what have I wrought? Hunter McAllister says, Blake, when you make it rain at the strip club... Do you use ones like, do you use dollar bills or like Jason and me, 20s? I should win a floppy. All right, so we're going to turn this off and re-record that because that was terrible. Let me try it again. Uh, Blake! Oh, that's, that's <laughs> Blake! <laughs> Blake, when you make it rain at the strip club, do you use ones? A.K.A. dollar bills, <laughs> you peasant. Or like Jason and me, use 20s. Oh, make it rain, bitches. <laughs> move, move there, Stephen Hawking. You're in my handicap spot. Yeah. So do you use 1s or 20s? Well, uh, <clears throat> considering I don't go to strip clubs. <clears throat> At Sports Clip, <laughs> do you use 1s <laughs> or 20s? <20? laughs> Uh, even if I did go to strip clubs, I certainly wouldn't date any strippers. But if, but if, I, were, but if I were making it rain, you use $2 bills. Exactly. And why do you use $2 bills? Because when it's dark, they look like 20s. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they pick them up, they realize, hey, this guy is kind of a little unusual, so it's not that bad. <laughs> or you go to Canada... And, and use coins. coins. <laughs> <laughs> Was it on the radio last week? I heard they were talking about this. They like have like they put another coin in the <laughs> slot machine. They, they wear like <laughs> magnetic bands, like so, like stick the coins to them. Wow. So like the garter belt has like, yeah, like a garter belt is a magnet. So you're like, hey, here, <laughs> clink. Here's another one, clink. Here, have a uh, toonie, clink. <laughs> Or, or you can do is uh, my, my father's story of going to the strip club when he was uh-huh. back in the military. Uh, when yeah, he's military there. strip clubs, they kind of go to, and together. They were, they were throwing quarters up there, and the girl was picking the quarters up. So my dad's asshole friend is sitting there with a lighter, lighting the coin. <laughs> oh, how oh, is she picking wrong. those coins up? <laughs> exactly, exactly how you would think she was picking them up. Yeah, yeah, they had to run out of that strip club. <laughs> That's what gives people like us a bad name. People like us. I mean, military. You guys. Oh, <laughs> the, the problem is when with all of, of Dad's stories, it's always the other guy's the asshole. I'm wondering to think if it's actually him, and he's just telling it in the third person. <laughs> you know, being an asshole, I think that's what probably happened. <laughs> is what I'm guessing. You know who else likes strip clubs? Stephen Hawking. I was going to say Rob. 
<laughs> Moving on. Okay, so what else That's we got? Me. I was just about to say, you know, when you date a stripper, you know the plus side of that is you know what she looks like naked before your first date. That is true. Okay, can we stop pounding on the table now? <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else we got? Uh, from Kevin at Cincy Explorer. Mm-hmm. He said, uh, here's my scorecard for the Oscars. I got six out of eight. Did I beat Scab Jeff? He no. did not. <laughs> he lost on, uh, let's see, best original and best adapted screenplay. That's the only two he missed out of the eight. So, Scab Jeff, welcome. You at least won something. You can't beat Jeff, but you won something. If he hadn't cheated off me, I would have beat Jeff. It's a good call. Good call. I didn't necessarily cheat off you. I just cheated off of the what is expected to win based on the odds at the website there weren't I looked a lot at. Of, there weren't a lot of uh, upsets. Yes. Uh, apparently those upsets were in shorts or uh, documentaries, documentaries or both. <laughs> what else we got? Uh, next from uh, Besada Geek. Take a listen to those guys. He says, uh, how does Lost end? Asking for Miguel. It never had. It it's still going on. I'll tell you how it ends. You okay. know how it ends? It ends exactly the way you thought it was gonna end. After you see the goddamn, you know, uh season one, episode one pilot, and then you waste seven years of your life watching seven series and Again, it ends exactly the way the you table. thought it was going to be. I think you're pissing off everyone listening by that table pounding. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of porn stars say. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Blake, but you say that like, oh my god, because I figured out the ending. It's a terrible, terrible show in the pilot. Oh, so? Um, I think the polar bear did it. The polar bear did do it. There it was go. the polar bear. Is that like a figment of their imagination, or no. what was that? There was a polar bear. There was a polar bear. Yeah. Why? Everything that happened and went on tangents, all of it doesn't matter. What uh, was it about? The, the well, pol- I mean, it was polar bear because at one point on the island they had uh, uh, experiments, experimental things or something. The polar bear was one of the things they're experimenting Could on. Could the polar bear actually survive on a tropical island? Uh, it did. I wonder so, in real life. They survive in zoos. If we got any zookeepers, I don't mean Kevin James out there. Please let us know. Could a polar bear survive in a tropical climate? What else we got? I don't know, but we're going to find out soon with global warming. That's true. <laughs> the polar bears would be dead by then. Uh, Genie of Hobie. Oh, Genie. Please talk about how amazing I am. Not me, Genie. Genie, you're amazing. Genie is amazing. Most amazing. Also, what cheesecake should I bring next time I am in Cincinnati? Strawberry. Or blueberry. Anything but strawberry or blueberry. Chocolate. Poisonberry? <laughs> Poisonberry. Kiwi? Kiwi. Snozberries. Oh. Uh, avocado strawberry? No. Okay. Kiwi. I vote for a kiwi. I, I was thinking more of like a uh, chocolate peanut butter, like a buckeye. You bring somebody from New Zealand with her? No, the that fruit. Could, oh, the fruit. Okay. <laughs> the Chinese gooseberry. Some people are like, you were called plants. Thank you, Clue. I would say any cheesecake she brings, we should be grateful and eat it. We should. We should. Uh-oh. I just said no to those ones because they were the ones Jason wanted. <laughs> Scab Jeff, will you bring avocados next time? No. What about artichokes? <laughs> sure. Okay. What else we got? Uh, next one from our uh, most educated listener. Yes. He's got like five PhDs now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Des Hassing. <coughs> Are they all in theater? No. <laughs> theater and spoken word. Okay. Find a job like that <laughs> with those theories. From uh, Des Hassing, he says, uh, For what item or benefit did Brigger sell his obviously missing soul? Uh, there's been reports I have no soul. Um, what do you mean, report? It was, it was pretzels, right? No, well, I did sell them for pretzels. No, no, that you, you sold your, your you lost all your morals for pretzels. That's true. That is true. And they, uh, they were kept behind the bar at Maloney's Pub over in Delhi. Yes, for the Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you sell your soul for, Scab Jeff? If it was an offer out there, what would you sell your soul for? For if you had one. I was not ready for this question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Blake, what would know. you sell your soul for? I think Scab Jeff would sell his for a llama. Oh, <laughs> a real one. one. No, a real mm-hmm. one. A real one. Uh, Jeff, what would you sell yours for? I'm, I'm liking the way Homer Simpson went and sold it for a donut. Okay. Don't touch it, though. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't eat the whole thing. Just have a do not touch, <coughs> sold donut. But I don't know what I would sell. I, but it did turn out that Homer's soul wasn't his to sell. You're right, because he had already given it to Marge. Yes. That's true. 
Uh, Jim, what would you sell yours for? Um, hair? No, no, I don't need hair that much. Okay. Because uh, I have plenty downstairs. True love. You do have a gherkin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, would you sell for a no, Bengals maybe. Super Bowl? No, no, no. no. Okay. I'm not that big of a fan of the Bengals. Ownership it's... of the Bengals? No. Okay. No, no. I probably wouldn't do sports related. Okay. Well, this is dying quick. Yeah. Moving on. What else we got? <laughs> Blake. Uh, well, Blake. So much for your next PhD thesis, guys. <laughs> I think Blake would sell it for one night with Remy Lacroix. <laughs> yes. One night with Remy, a lifetime of herpes. <laughs> one night with Remy makes a hard man humble. <laughs> Blake, keep going. Corrections. <laughs> we have only one corrections this week. Oh, only no, one. two. 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 Oh, no, one. Two. I don't know. One. Well, we can't count. Yes. All right, so the first correction is from Dev. He said, Drew Barrymore is in the Netflix original Santa Clarita Diet with Timothy Oliphant. We were trying to figure out what she was in last week. Yes. So, uh, because nobody yeah. knew, because we were trying to buy, buy and sell stock of yeah. Drew Barrymore. Trying to figure out what she was in most recently. I, I, can, I can really forgot she was in the Santa Clarita Diet. She just got renewed for a second season. So there you go. I didn't realize she was even in that. Yeah. I thought I mentioned it last week. <laughs> <laughs> Probably did. Yeah. <laughs> really, nobody listened to you. Scott, yeah. Now you know what it feels like to be me. Keep going, Blake. No, doesn't. Else? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> That's right. I have good impressions. Uh, go ahead. All right. So we we do have a couple of listener reviews. Mm-hmm. The first one is from uh, Doug. Number one fame. A pants. Formerly known as? Anal glands. Sure. All right, he says, uh, my review of Black Lightning. He is incorrect. It's a great show. He can go fuck himself. Really? I, can't say I read that as... He's a B? I'm yeah. taking artistic liberty. Yeah. Uh, I read that as it is dot, 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 Z, 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 What's Jeannie got to say of Hobie? Z, 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 Z. Jenny says, fuck you guys' cheesecake. I quit. <laughs> no, she says, my daughter, 13. That's her age, not her name. Told me. <laughs> yeah, not 11. <laughs> That's right. It's 13. Seven. <laughs> my daughter, 13, told me. My friends told me to watch Riverdale. I watched 15 minutes and felt I was dumber for watching it. I may need new friends, Mom. No, wow. you're the problem. From a 13-year-old... That we, is a smart, smart girl. Yes. We've been telling Jason that he's had the uh, mentality of a 13-year-old girl for watching it. But and apparently it we're out, wrong. Yes. It it's an out, 11-year-old girl. Finds out we were giving a, a 13-year-old girls not enough credit. But exactly. are these abs? But they oh only watch God. 15 minutes of it. It doesn't count unless you watch at least an episode. Thank you. <laughs> at least three or 16. Uh, it's a great <laughs> show. <laughs> No, no, it really is. Yes, it is. His abs. I tried to watch. The no, you show. didn't. I did. Well, I've it, it, seven episodes. It makes perfect sense why Jason enjoys it. He can't get any dumber. Oh, <laughs> I, I stand corrected. <laughs> stand corrected. I stand corrected. Uh, yes. Yeah, so let's wrap this <laughs> you up. You don't stand. <laughs> <laughs> I sit corrected. Oh, boo. <laughs> Uh, from Professor Number One and Doctor Number One. So a woman has sex with a fish man wins Best Picture, but La La Land doesn't. So that just means a fish man is sexier than Ryan Gosling. Back me up there, Scab. Why did you look at me when you said that? Because you're a big La La Land fan <laughs> and Ryan Gosling fan. So yeah, I kind of am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically, what we learned tonight: uh, fishmen uh, sell better and more sex products than La La Land does. La La Land. That's pretty impressive. Because that's Emma Stone. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, did, I don't I think Jason probably bought the uh, Emma Stone uh, mold vagina already. Mm. Uh, moldy vagina? <laughs> yes, moldy vagina. Well, I did leave it out in the sun over the summer. Mm. After you poured the uh, milk in it? Man, the ice cream? <laughs> after, after he stuffed the ice cream in there? After reenacting a Fifty Shades Darker. But you're not, uh, kids, free. don't try that at home. Yeah, two episodes ago we told you about the PSA. Please do not put ice cream in your vagina. In your hoo-ha. Sorry. For those who don't say the V word. Sorry. <laughs> 
Do you ever wonder when Spider-Man goes to the bathroom if the toilet paper sticks to his fingers? Do you ever wonder why Superman wears his underwear outside of his pants? My name is Imran. My name is Anthony. He's the jock! And he's the nerd. And we're your hosts for the Jock and Nerd podcast, where we sometimes try to attempt to answer these questions. This is a full spoiler podcast, and we swear a lot. Check it out for awesome geek news, interviews, and comic book reviews. Visit jockandnerd.com. We are your superhero TV, movies, and comic book culture curators. Boom. Jockandnerd.com. Jockandnerd! That music can only mean one thing, Jeff. What do you think it means? Uh, news. That we, that we still haven't found our old news uh, promo. That's true, intro. that's true. And our old computer is officially dead. Uh, I was trying to get anything out of it, and it was not doing well. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, so that's that's been gone. I guess we could probably pull it from an old show. We can always pull it from an old show. That's your job, Jeff. All right. <clears throat> your job. Uh, let's see here. News of the Geek here. Uh, Canadian skier has apologized for poor judgment as he and his coach and wife are fined for drunkenly stealing a car at the Pyongyang Chang. P.F. Chang. Stop it. How do you say it? Pyongyang. Pyongyang. Olympics. The incident occurred when ski cross, uh, ski cross co- uh, competitor Dave Duncan, his wife Maha, and coach William Rain were arrested on Saturday for taking a car after a night out at the bar. This was last Saturday. Uh, Rain, who was allegedly driving... Or two Saturdays ago. Thank you. Rain, who was allegedly driving the SUV, was fined $5 million in South Korean currency, approximately $4,600. And Duncan and his wife were each fined $1 million, uh, one, which is about $930. That does not sound right. Uh, the coach had a .16 blood alcohol level, and the legal limit in South Korea is .05. That's pretty low. It's about, what, two beers? Uh, .05? Probably less than. It's about a beer and a half. Beer and a half. And if you're smaller. not to stereotype, but Koreans are usually smaller than Americans. So. Yeah. Uh, the Duncan said their behavior is not up to the standard expected of Team Canada, you think? Duncan's group is not allowed to leave South Korea until the fines are paid. The Hummer belonged to a 57-year-old tourist who was visiting the games, according to local reports. In his own statement said, Rain said, words are not enough to express how sorry I am. I have let my sorry. Te- saw a- sorry. I've let my teammates, friends, uh, woodchucks, and my family down. Uh, Duncan completed his co- competition Wednesday and placed eighth. Ski cross mix- mixes natural terrain with man-made features, including big air jumps, high bank turns, and pits of despair. He later said on Instagram, "So this is what an Olympics is supposed to feel like—a solid eighth place here." My best skiing of the season and an effort I'm proud of. This is what Olympics are supposed to feel like. Being arrested and fined a million won. Whose idea was that to steal that car? Uh, Drunk. Okay. (laughs) Is he going to be nominated for Canadian of the Year for the floppies? He is now. (laughs) Now, which one's being nominated? The guy, the... All of them. (laughs) Team Canada is nominated. (laughs) So is Trudeau going to come in and get them out of Korea? Uh, (laughs) Kind of like how... Uh, President Trump had to step in and get the uh, UCLA athletes out of China. Actually, Dennis Rodman is over there right now. He's helping. Uh, Blake, do you like this article? Yeah, I like it. It shows that uh, athletes from any country can be idiots, not just ours. Ryan Lochte goes, look, I'm not the dumbest. (laughs) Yes, you are. Only second dumbest. (laughs) We all know Gronk is still the dumbest athlete. (laughs) Me, Gronk, me, crash car. Uh, you see, he's but soon uh, to be your WWE star next yeah, year. Yeah, he is. He has an offer. He has an offer. But he has to retire from football first, doesn't he? Uh, he's so dumb and concussed that he thinks he already did, so he's fine. Uh, per, per Metro, news of the weird is here. Uh, Metro is the website. A pilot was forced to make an emergency landing after a ruckus. Can you describe the ruckus? Caused by a passenger who refused to stop farting. <laughs> the, this is true. <laughs> Passenger apparently kept breaking wind on a board of Transavia Airlines flight from Dubai to Amsterdam last week. Transavia. The two Dutchmen sitting next to him didn't take it very well to his flatulence, but the unashamed man was apparently not put off and refused to hold back. (laughs) Members of the crew on the Dutch low-cost airline were apparently less than sympathetic and refused to do anything about it. Is this Southwest? Uh, despite a warning from the pilot, a fight between the men broke out, causing the flight to be diverted to Vienna Airport. 
Uh, police boarded the uh, plane with dogs and removed two sisters and the two men after the reply made a report about passengers on the rampage. What do they need the dogs for? <laughs> they're d- they're sniff the guy out? out? <laughs> <laughs> they're bomb-sniffing dogs, fart-sniffing dogs. <laughs> <laughs> the women are now taking the Dutch bu- uh, Dutch budget airline to court after being removed from the flight and claim they have done nothing wrong. <laughs> They're just in the way. <laughs> They're like, hey, what, do, what do we do? <laughs> Nora Latchbob? Lacob. Whatever. 25, a lawsuit from Rotterdam and her unnamed sister, Vienna. Well, say- obviously it must have been <laughs> Lacob. That <laughs> be- could be a married name. Could be, that's uh, true. Saying being removed was humiliating, humiliating, whatever. Humiliating. <laughs> Is it Sorry. implying that they're the ones that were farting? Is that why they're humiliated? I don't know. And now seeking legal action. The two women were returning to Amsterdam after a week holidaying in Dubai. You know this is a British news uh, article because they said holiday. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we're holidaying in Dubai. We don't go on vacation. We get yeah, on the holiday. So yeah. What did you go for a holiday? I went to Dubai. Yes, yeah, so in the U.S., uh, holiday is not a verb. No. No. Uh, let's see. Nora told the de- de- Telegraph. The oh. Telegraph. We had nothing to do with the whole disturbance. We distanced ourselves from that. Do they sometimes think that all Moroccans cause problems? Hey, oh, why are you playing Moroccans on? Let's not jump hey, off the deep end here. Down man. the hall. Hey. Calm down, Nora. <laughs> That's why we did not let it sit. We had no idea who these boys were. We just had the bad luck to be in the same row. We didn't do anything. <laughs> all I always said is that crew were really provocative and stirred things up. Or maybe they were complicit to the farting. <laughs> <laughs> all four passengers have since been released. And we're not arrested, as they had not broken Aus- Austrian laws. <laughs> <laughs> what about international? <laughs> yeah. Just what about EU? Time. What about the EU? What's the EU got to say about this? I'm the pretty sure the Geneva Convention <laughs> said something. <laughs> about the party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyways. However, they have all been banned from Transavia Airlines. <laughs> Transavia. Transavia. In a statement, they said, Our crew must ensure a safe flight. When passengers pose risk, they immediately intervene. Our people are trained for that. They know very well where the boundaries are. Transavaria is therefore square behind the cabin crew and the pilots. Except we didn't know how to react to people farting excessively <laughs> on our planes. We weren't trained for that. Could you imagine being the pilot? I went to p- flight school. I'm intelligent. I know how to fly. I'm sorry, there's a guy farting back there. Could you do something? <laughs> yeah, but again, honestly, I, could you stop farting? <laughs> no, it's a natural bodily function, man. <laughs> if I hold it up, I might explode. I would pay to see that. <laughs> Oh, man. But you know what? When you are in an airplane and you do have to fart, turn the air on real quick. The the nozzles, that's right. Yeah, make sure they're on. And then afterwards, everybody everybody, (laughs) and then try to diffuse it as quickly as possible. Then pretend you're like, God, who did that? (laughs) Jeez, oh, Pete. Wasn't me? Then look around like, who did that? Wasn't me? It's like Peter Griffin getting in an elevator with one other person, ripping ass, and looking at him saying, it was you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah, so there you go. There's your news of the geek this week. And uh, thanks, Blake, for the two articles this week. Hey, like anything I could do to bring the level of <laughs> sophistication up on this podcast. That's right. Let's see, I'm giving you articles about, you know, car, <laughs> car dildos, <theft>. farts. <laughs> dildos, farts, and car theft. Yeah. Well done, Blake. I'm, well done. I'm out. You're classy. Jeff, what are you doing September 14th through the 16th? I'm going to the Cincinnati Comic Expo. That's right. Uh, at the Duke Energy Convention Center in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, September 14th through 16th. Get your tickets at the CincinnatiComicExpo.com. Hobie will be there. Uh, also, Jamie Lannister will be there. Because you still don't know how to say his name. That's correct. Uh, Kobe Smolders, she will be there. Yes. I got that name right. You did. No, yes. you said Kobe. No, not Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Not Kobe Bryant. <laughs> no, no, no. Kobe. No. No, no, no. Uh, we also have uh, British illustrator John Bolton. Uh, if you're a comic book fan in the 1980s, you will know his name. Uh, he will be there. He is. It is very rare that he does a, a American appearance, so he will be there. So uh, there will also be a lot more announced of guests, artists, television stars, movie stars uh, as we get a little bit closer. Uh, check every week on the CincinnatiComicExpo.com website. Or on our Facebook page at the History of Bad Ideas, or the Cincinnati Comic Expo uh, Facebook page, September fourteenth through the sixteenth. Get your tickets now. It's time for box office bombs. 
Uh, not really much bomb news to talk about here. I mean, I suppose Black Panther made another $66 million for a total of $501 million on a $200 million budget. Well done. That's just domestically. Half a billion domestic. Yes. I think it's going to fail. <laughs> Is it too big to fail? <laughs> no, it's not too big to fail. <laughs> Uh, Scab Jeff, did you see this movie? I haven't seen it yet. I've heard nothing. So you watched Dear Basketball, but you won't watch Black Panther. It wasn't nominated. I was in. Oh, it will watched, be. I was in only watch the nominated film mode. Take your son to see it. It's a good movie. And Dear Basketball was free on a streaming service. And six minutes long. And look at the quality you get. Right. I'd rather spend the money and go see Black Panther. Fuck you, Kobe. Yeah, Kobe's got an Oscar. That's true. Uh, second this week, Red Sparrow made $17 million in its opening weekend. Five uh, of that's Jason's. On yes. a $69 million budget. Five uh, million of it was me. <laughs> I just kept paying. <laughs> More boobs. <laughs> 69 I think, uh, I don't know if that's going to make any money. Uh, they said it was kind of disappointing. Uh, they were hoping a little bit, like, low 20s. Yeah. What do you expect, though? I mean, it wasn't... I don't know if anybody knows what it's about besides it's a spy movie. Like, they didn't show much about it, which is fine. No, I don't think I, I saw any ads for it. Yeah, there was not much publicity on it. And, and it's still going up against Black Panther. Yes. Death Wish did worse, made $13 million in its opening weekend, but its budget was only $30 million. I don't know if it gets $30 million domestic. It's Eli Roth, so I'm okay with that. Uh, I, I was debating which one to see Red Sparrow, Death Wish. I was like, I was like, I like Jennifer Lawrence better than Bruce Willis. Let's go with that. Is Death Wish, Wish really Eli Roth? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I kind of want to see it now. Uh, number four this week, Game Night made an uh, eleven million dollars. Excuse me, a total of thirty-three and a half million on a thirty-seven million dollar budget. So funny thing about this, ha ha ha! Uh, this is the second week it's out. Yes. Uh, my wife and I were actually going to go see this movie on Saturday night. Yeah, you're talking about that for a couple months now. Yeah, I wanted to go see it. Okay, second week out, the no 7 o'clock shows, no 7.30, they had a 6.50 and a 10.30. That's it. Well, Which I thought was a little odd because it was like second week out, you would expect like the... You go to the 6.50. Well, we didn't get done with dinner in time. But well, that's I mean, your fault. Up, I just thought that was a little odd, though, that it wasn't like a 7 to 8 showing. Like, you would think that most, you know... 6.50 is close enough to 7. Come on. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I thought it was a little too early. So, it sucked. I wanted to see it, though. So Then go see it. <sighs> Some of us have jobs, Jim. Hey, 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 hey. Just saying. I have yeah, to jobs that let you go to see uh, matinee movies on Friday. I was off work that day. Thank you. Yeah. See? Jobs that let you, like, not work. Sock it, bitch. I don't even get it. I don't know. What am hey, I talking? I don't know. Shut up. Just go. <laughs> and Peter Rabbit made another $10 million. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So is Peter Rabbit going to be up for best animated film next year? Probably. What is the st category for animated? Would that be animated or not? Because it's CGI. That's animated. Yeah. Uh, Live action people in it, though. Is it? Yeah. There's live action people in it. Oh. Oh. Were there live action people in the cred in the uh, previews I saw? I don't know, but I only saw the bunch of rabbits. I didn't even know there <laughs> were people in it. Uh, I'm I'm asking though, is that I what is know. the 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 rules? Uh, that might not qualify if it's not a hundred percent animated. Yeah, I was just wondering. Because like I don't think the Jungle Book qualified as animated. That's a good call. Never thought of that. Or any of the Star Wars films. The the prequels <laughs> were nominated for part two. <laughs> the question is, what about the remake of The Lion King? Because there's no people in it, so it's going to be 100% animated. Mm, CGI. CGI is animation, yeah. though. I, th I don't think it's going to be a Is cartoon. Andy Serkis playing every character? Probably. Okay. <laughs> I think and, they're and getting... Doug Brown or Jones or Doug whatever. Doug Jones? Yes. <laughs> uh, coming out this week... A Wrinkle in Time, eh. Strangers, colon, Pray at Night, eh. The Hurricane Heist. For the make, from the producers of Fast and Furious, it's about uh, bank robbery or some type yeah. of robbery during a hurricane. 
The oh. title, the the plot is, is in, in the, the title. title. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. <laughs> and Gringo. I saw a preview for that tonight. That doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad. Not enough to make me see it. No. Any not when a wrinkle in time is going to be in the theaters. Are you going to see that? Probably not, but I okay. want to see it. I don't. I do because I liked the book when I was a child. Uh, Scab Jeff, what are you seeing this weekend? Any of those four? I don't think I will. He still has to see Black Panther. I still have to see Black Black Panther, if anything. Did you see the previews for Strangers Pray at Night? I did not. It's kind of creepy. I will say that. It does look creepy. I'm not seeing it, but... I I heard that that Veronica movie that just came out on Netflix is, like, the scariest movie of all time or something like that. I have not seen this one. So I'm curious to see that one. Uh, Jimmy, you you see anything? Uh, If I see anything, I'll see Game Night. Okay. You don't want to see Hurricane Heist? Maybe when it comes to uh, eight track. Okay, so next week. <laughs> uh, what else we got, Jeff? Uh, buy sell. Find the stock. Buy the stock of Jennifer Lawrence. Sixty six dollars and twenty three cents. That is absurd. Oh. I have to buy. Yeah, it's a comparison to Emily Blunt's fifty eight twenty six. Uh, Emily Blunt. She is in Mary Poppins Returns. Yeah. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's coming out Christmas. But, but this is. Ridiculous, because like, wasn't Rebel Wilson like eighty eight dollars? Yes, I don't understand how Jennifer Lawrence is only sixty six dollars. She was just in Mother, and this one might not make its money back. Red Sparrow, but then yeah. She, yeah, she's she, in X Men. Yeah, she has the new X Men coming out. She has a string of success coming off films uh, again with uh, Hunger Games, with uh, American Hustle. Uh, uh, she was the lady that made the mop. Joy, Joy. Joy. And uh, oh. she's an Oscar winner. Yeah. yeah, she's yeah. she's A list. She's A list. Okay, let's list just say it. Rebel Wilson should not be higher than her. Exactly. Be- I'm, I'm buying at this price. I'm buying. I'm buying at this price. Blake, but has she shit in a sink? Jennifer Lawrence or Rebel Wilson? Jennifer Lawrence. No, I say neither. Neither. Have. Have. That was Melissa McCarthy. Eh, you sure? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Well, see, obviously, in order to raise your stock, you yeah, must she- gotta shit in a sink. So, are you buying or selling? That's undervalued. I'm buying that All as day. much as I can. I'll buy twice. Okay. <laughs> what else, Jeff? Uh, Bruce Willis. His stock is currently at $37.43. Hmm. Comparing that to Arnold Schwarzenegger at thirty one oh three. The uh, man made of leather? I, I like Bruce Willis better than Schwarzenegger, but I don't know what else he... Uh, about $6. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking it might be right about right, and I might pass. So you're selling. I'm just not buying. Okay, that's not an option, I, but okay. I will probably at this price buy thinking he's got at least one more hit in him somewhere. I they agree. They just haven't found it yet. Red 3, maybe. Uh, Die Hard 6? No. Out of Russia? No, Die Hard 5, I think, precluded them from... Oh, wait, oh, they're doing Die Hard 6, aren't they? Are they doing that one? I have no idea. I think yeah, Die Hard 5 killed It's called it. Die Hard 6, Death Wish. <laughs> no, well, wasn't it the one where it was, like, partly nowadays and partly a flashback? They were, oh, that's right. We did talk about we that. Talked about pre- that. Yeah, part, pretty Are they cool. still doing that? Or? I have not heard anything, but I will look it up for you. Uh, mm-hmm. I will buy, though, Jeff. I'm on your boat. I think he could probably get one good film out of him left. Uh, Scab Jeff, what are you going with? I think it's just about right. Can I keep my... No, you gotta buy. You gotta buy or sell. Apparently because Jason made those rules. I didn't do either. I'm selling. (laughs) Uh, Jim passed. Okay. I passed. I didn't buy or sell. (laughs) Jim doesn't listen. (laughs) Yeah. There's no hold. If If Jason says something, I will normally do the exact opposite and not listen to anything he says. Are you my wife? (laughs) No, I was actually asked by the listeners of uh, Hobie to come on and pretty much troll you on air, since they all do it on Twitter. They need somebody to do it in person. I appreciate that. No problem. Uh, Blake, you buying or selling? Uh, you gotta sell. Cut your losses. Okay. Let's do some top five, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, before we get to the top five here, uh, Den of Geek had an article... Uh, Die Hard 6 and the prequel problem. Die Hard, colon, year one is the latest project that's set to dig into the early years of a screen character. But why? <laughs> is the question. Uh, it was supposed to start at the end of uh, shooting in 2017 as not. Uh, they said it's going to be a prequel and a sequel. Uh, director Len Wiseman, who did Die Hard 4, 
uh, has engaged Bruce Willis on the project and has talked about it. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so they're trying to get it going, but it's not official yet. Uh, basically, you would be doing the origins of the character of John McClane. Oh, does it have Justin Long? I like Justin Long. I think I already know the origins of the character of John McClane. He was a New York cop. There you go. Who That's got divorced. Basically. And then one Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> basically, it's dot, about how dot, John dot. met his wife, Holly. How he ended up being a cop and what happened to them to leave them as strange. Yay. <laughs> so it's a rom-com? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> a a complete, there, there's no action in it at all. It's kind of like a, 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 one of those old uh, Rock the, Hudson, <laughs> Doris Day, Pillow Talk movies. It's the breakup. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Die Hard 5 did not do well domestically, but still made over $300 million worldwide. Uh, foreigners are dumb. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> That does not... Uh... We equal opportunity, all of them. That's right. You know who else is dumb? Americans. Americans are dumb. <laughs> Americans are very there, dumb. So everyone is dumb. Uh, Except for the guys at this table. Of course. And Des Hassing. Len Wiseman described it to Collider as... Collider. Collider. We've never seen the actual <laughs> love story. We know it's a demise, but we've never seen what it was like when he met Holly. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we really don't care. That's that, that character that we really don't need the backstory to. No, no, no. You know another one? Solo. <laughs> we don't need the backstory. I would rather have a, holo, a solo story than a McLean story. Oh, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Hmm. Which characters do we not need a backstory f- uh, for more less than... Uh, and then John yeah. McClane? Yeah. Top five next week. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you excited they're making a Passion of the Christ 2? Well, in? now we have some background. <laughs> <in there. laughs> Except for the first one, you're, who is this person? <laughs> He's being crucified. Why is he making a table? <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he did design well, the high table. <laughs> the table was the backstory. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a bad table, they had to crucify him. <laughs> Never saw anything else. Uh, okay, what's your top five this week, Jeff? Uh, it is uh, top five favorite apocalyptic movies. From Meg Griffin. Thank you, Meg. Uh, Scab Jeff, what's your number five? This is the first. Uh, it's not my number five, but this is the first time I've ever hobied one of these. Whoa. Yeah. It's my number two, so we got to build up to it. <laughs> what's your number five? My number five is Delicatessen. Uh, French film about uh, the, there's not a lot of food left in the world, and so they start cooking the people who live in this apartment building and <laughs> serving it to the rest of the people there, so they try to get more people to move in so that they can kill them and cook them. I did see that on a bunch of lists. I wasn't sure what it was. <laughs> now I'm intrigued. When did it come out? Uh, it was 90s. Oh, okay. So their specialty was uh, soil and green? It is people! <laughs> Uh, what's your number five, Blake? My number five, I went for the comic spin on this, mm-hmm. and we talked about Emma Stone, mm. so I'm going with uh, Zombieland. You Zombie motherfucker. Zombieland was my number three. That's my number one. That was awesome. Part, that was part of my number one. <laughs> she she put, put it on the board! It was put it on the board! <laughs> well, we just kept it. We know you have no taste, so that's why you didn't have it. <laughs> wow, you took a Man. lot of people down with that. Man, okay, it was just part of my number one. I hope we wow. get out of this list. <laughs> Jeez, old. It's pretty impressive. Uh, what's your number five, Jim? My number five is just one. And I, I Pretty much I liked it because people's reactions after they watched it, they were disappointed in it. And it was Seeking a, seeking a Friend for the End of the World. That was a funny movie. I Not did funny really movie. like that. That was a good movie. Keira Knightley and um, uh, um, Steve Carell. Yes. And, and everybody's like, I can't believe the world ended. It says it in the title. <laughs> Again, one of those movies where the plot is in the title. <laughs> what did you expect to happen? The asteroid missed us? <laughs> what, the Titanic sank at the end? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, mean, I enjoyed the movie, but I enjoyed people That's being like, pissed off afterwards like, so much. But I didn't want him to die. I want it to end. <laughs> it's like letters from Iwo Jima. You mean the Japanese lose? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Step up two. They're actually in the streets. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, Jeff, what's your number five? Uh, my number five is 2004's Dawn of the Dead. 
I thought about that one. That was a very well done film. Much better than the original. Much better than the piece of Ri- shit original. Oh my god, that original was so bad. Is it the one where they're in the mall? Yes. Yes. Uh, that's called uh, Mall Rats. No. <laughs> that's my number two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number f- uh, and, and hey, zomp- No reaction. No, He's just I'm, I'm biding my time. Until <laughs> <laughs> I get to that one. <laughs> Zombie baby. Building up. Uh, my number five was 28 Days Later. That okay. was my number four. Oh. That was my number four. I almost put that as my number five. It was between <laughs> that and Delicatessen. But they have nothing to do with one another, so I can't put them both. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They're apocalyptic movies. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, Jeff. That was, you that was not on my list. Jeff, now that's twice in the last week and a half you have defended me, and I'm scared. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. No, 20 Days are, I really enjoyed it. And I like that, again, it goes back to, you think it's one type of movie, and then it kind of switches gears. Yes. Don't see the next movie, though. 28 months later? Weeks. Weeks, weeks. whatever. <laughs> God. Um, and then a good uh, soundtrack. 28 weeks or for later? Later. Did it? For mood music. Okay. Uh, my number four? It's a horrible film. I admit. But I love it. It has the, it's Armageddon. I love watching Armageddon. All right, next. Uh, my number four was 28 Days Later. <laughs> Kim, what's your number that four? That was my number four. Hey! <laughs> okay, I, I hope he'd this one. Uh, my number four. 28 Days Later? No, no, no. Oh. It's uh, Nine. <gasps> I forgot Nine. The animated one? The animated film, Nine. Oh, God. Uh, the animated film, Wally. I thought about that one. I've never seen the whole thing of the. Yeah, I've never actually seen Wally. It's I really enjoyed it, and the animated film Titan A.E. Oh, I forgot about Titan A.E. They're, <laughs> They're all animated. They're all animated. That's my number four too. I tied that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the prequel Titan B.C. <laughs> How was that? It wasn't as good. That wasn't. <laughs> Titan A.E. was good. Uh, that was good, nobody's talked about it. Great soundtrack too. Yes. Oh, of course it did have Creed in it. Yes, the, the soundtrack. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Drew Barrymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Drew Barrymore. We named the planet Bob. Uh, Blake, what's your number four? Twenty-eight days <laughs> later. Diary. Yeah, twenty-eight uh, days later, not twenty-eight days. That yeah. was a different movie altogether. Sacred Bullock. You great. That was a pop <laughs> uh, We I stopped down. drinking. <laughs> <laughs> My number four, I have a boy and his dog. See, I never saw that. Uh-huh, it was I on like every it. list I looked at apocalyptic it's movies. It's about a, a futuristic world. There's maybe one girl for every 100, 200 guys, so everybody tries to get the girls so they can rape the shit out of them. <laughs> Jesus! And God. this one guy, he's just roaming the, country, the, the wasteland with his dog, and he finds this girl, and he helps her escape. And then they're away from civilization for so long, and and he's getting hungry, and it's just him and the dog and the woman, so they eat the woman. Spoiler! <laughs> 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 Is that the end? Did you spoil it? <laughs> oh. It's from the 30s, right? It's yeah. from the 60s. I think something. we've already talked about this <laughs> on here. <laughs> so if you haven't seen it by now, you're not going to see it. Uh, what's your number three? <laughs> Dr. Strangelove. I, I thought that would be on yours. I, th- I thought about that. I would probably made honorable mention. I would. I would put it on there. But I, when you're talking about apocalyptic movies, I was thinking post-apocalyptic event. Yeah, I can't. I agree not the actual that. event. Not itself. the actual event itself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, not the actual. That's a strange love was uh, honorable mention for me. Uh, which yeah. number three? Mike? Otherwise, I w- it would be on my list. I agree. Uh, number three for me. I'm glad when I first thought of this movie that it was on a lot of other people's lists, and I, I love Viggo Mortensen's The Road. Yes. Uh, you know, I've, I've talked about it back uh, several years ago mm-hmm. on the podcast. <laughs> and uh, and I, I like it because it's uh, you never really know what happened or what went wrong. But, you know, it had something to do with, uh, you know, basically trying to survive post. Him and his son, you think? Yeah. And either they're trying to go to the yeah. coast because they think it's better and all that kind of fun stuff. It's never better on the coast. No. East Coast or West Coast? Both. Okay. You always go north. Uh, Jim, what's your number three? Uh, my number three, I will have to go with The Watchmen. Mm. Oh. Everybody loves Blue Penis. Mm. Blue Penis. Okay. Yeah, I didn't put that on my list. I don't know. I suppose I didn't think that apocalyptic when I was making my list. Or it's a good film, so there you go. <laughs> well, it's a good film. Maybe uh, I'll tie that 
with Dawn of the Dead because they're both they Zack Snyder the movies. Apocalypse? What's that? No, it still happens. It? Did you see the movie? It I still happens. It. it still happens. No, they just destroyed New York and then that saved the, the rest of the world, didn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. But we don't know what actually happens after that. He eats but the girl. the smartest man in the world says that saves the world. <laughs> he's, he's got a point. Yeah. <clears throat> well, well, it's okay. I'll take that off and I'll put the prophecy. <laughs> oh, the prophecy. <laughs> Christopher Walken. Uh, what's your number three, Jeff? Um, my number three was Zombieland. Okay. Uh, my number three, I think it's post-apocalyptic. The Mist, I thought it was. That's my number two. Ah! <laughs> Fantastic yeah. ending. Greatest ending ever. Of course, so... you could have just waited ten more minutes. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, great film. Uh, see, that's a lesson why you, if you're going to do a mass suicide pact, you always go last. That's true. That's true. Uh, unfortunately, make sure you have the bullets, too. Uh, yes, great film. Loved it. Uh, didn't know what the fuck was going on for the first half of it, and then uh, just everything was awesome with that film. Uh, number two for me, everybody knows, Interstellar. Love Interstellar. The world's coming to end. they got to find another world. Um, so they go through some wormholes, and Anne Hathaway, all right, all right, all right, is in it, and uh, Christopher Nolan, Michael Caine, some bitches just want to watch the world burn. Meh. And, uh, no, I love that movie. Matthew McConaughey. You know, speaking of a Matthew McConaughey, it's an awful movie. Tangent. Awful. <laughs> Didn't Matthew McConaughey's beard on HD in the Oscars just look really, really horrible? I was waiting for birds to come out of it. It was a nasty looking it thing, was wasn't it? Well, he doesn't bathe. I He's know. down in Texas playing bongo drums. I play my bongos. I play my bongos. Film. It, it was a horrible film. All they had to do was eat corn in the future. For God's sakes, man! But the land was dying. Uh, what's your number? It was like an inferior The Arrival. Your inferior arrival. <laughs> That's Blake's favorite movie. <laughs> what was wrong with The Arrival? <laughs> it was just for squid. Yeah, that was. Yeah, we got funky legs. <laughs> uh, what's your number two, Jim? My Jeff? number two is The Mist. Uh, number two, Jim. My number two. I hope he'd this. Mm-hmm. These are two. Fil- they came out about the same time. I think I saw them probably within like the same week or so. Not that they came out the same. That's when I saw them. It would be Children of Men. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. And Book of Eli. I wanted Children of Men to be a little bit better than what it was. I liked it, but I wanted it to be a little bit better. Clive Owen was awesome. It's it's not a rewatchable movie for me. I loved watching it the first time, but it's not one I can rewatch over. I can. Book of Eli was honorable mention. That's on a lot of people's top five list. Uh, I I have not seen it. It's a good one. It's worth watching. Yes. You should see it. Better than me. <laughs> Oopsie. Better. Spoiler. Oh, I already heard the spoilers. <laughs> yeah, so. I, already, I already ruined that for him. Oh. Better than Roman Israel. Because <laughs> uh, that's Denzel, too, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, number uh, two, Blake. My number two, actually, it almost could have been number one, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, mostly because I feel in many aspects we are living this today, and it's 1984. It's double plus good. I thought you were going to say idiocracy. That's what I thought he was going with. Too. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, electrolytes. <laughs> Which, is idiocracy actually apocalyptic? <laughs> as much as 1984. Yes. Yeah. Well, they were post Well, they were watering the fields with Gatorade. So I guess <laughs> no, it was Brondo. Oh, Brondo. Got, got electrolytes. <laughs> no, I, I. It is 1984. I, I even the book is better, but of course. George Orwell, but I, I really feel it's really scary on how a lot of the parallelisms we have today in our political climate reflects that movie, except for the cage with a rat attached to my face. <laughs> uh, so is Enemy of the State hobied with that one? No. Because that's very similar to 1984. No. Is that the Chris Rock movie? No, we'll, no, no, God, no. That was Chris a, Rock. Men of State. Men of State. Enemy of the State. Gene Hackman, Will Smith. <laughs> Chris Rock. That was a torch boy. <laughs> uh, uh, head of State, that's my number one. <laughs> <laughs> I, the best part about Head of the State is the two nominees, they die at the same time because their planes crash in air. I thought that was kind of fun. Into each other? Yes. That's the only thing I remember. Uh, what's your number two? I hobied it. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Two movies, probably the closest two movies that you could possibly have to one another. Uh, the original the Dawn the of the Dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the sucky and, version, okay. And the uh, Dario Argento re- re-editing of it, uh, Zombie, 
uh, which he just re-edits the whole thing, and he puts a new soundtrack on it, and it makes it not cheesy anymore. He makes it scary. So there's the campy version, which is spectacular, one of the best films <laughs> ever made. And then he takes the exact same shots from it and makes a completely different movie that has the same plot and everything called Zombie, and, and it's a spectacular well, maybe movie. Maybe I'll have to see that one, because I really did Are they like attached it. together because they're both crap films, or...? Because I could not decide between okay. them, which, nah, I probably could have decided. Interesting. They were so close, and I, I, I saw an opportunity to Hobie something. The Zack Snyder one is better. Uh, what's your number one? Um, La Jete, the movie that 12 Monkeys is based on. That's my number one. 12 Monkeys is my number one. 12 I'm Monkeys just, is my number one. Is it? It's not 12 no. Monkeys. It's the movie that 12 Monkeys but is I've based on. But I've never saw La Jete, so <laughs> I Much better. I think it's pronounced La Machete. 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 Oh, okay. Machete is... Uh, I've seen that. <laughs> they don't speak English in La Jette. Uh It's all told in still photographs with the uh, narrator in the background, so you can get it dubbed and it wouldn't affect the... the <laughs> so it wouldn't affect it. So that ruins my argument. Is, is Danny Trejo good in that? <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I just got that. <laughs> <laughs> Ten I minutes later, I wasn't, later, I wasn't paying attention to the side conversations, and then I started remembering what this. Uh, I get, I get it's it. Not as good as La Machete too, though. <laughs> that was the one. La Machete kills. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're here, Scam. Uh, what's your number one, Blake? Well, I, you know, I was going to go with the number two theme of Jello. It would have been uh, Planet of the Apes and Return to the Planet of the Apes. The new one, no, the Jello. remake, no, the Mark okay. Wahlberg one. No, my number one is 12 Monkeys, of course. Okay. It, was so, it was so good it spawned a shitty TV show <laughs> that I wasted years of my life watching. And when it finally came to the last series, the last series... Episode. Where they, yeah, basically it was a, what, a series binge? Like yeah. Netflix, a la? I didn't even bother to watch it. It was all on two weekends. Yeah. Uh, what's your number one, Jim? I hope you this one. I did have uh, Zombieland on there, mm-hmm. which I've done. But then also uh, Shaun of the Dead. Oh, I forgot about that one. Oh, and man. Dogma. Ah, I guess Dogma is. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 What do they have to do with one another? They're all comedies. Okay. That you don't expect, like it's it's they're on number one. It's apocalypse. It's it, they're apocalyptic movies where everything's supposed to be. So you didn't go for down. this is the end. I didn't go. This is the end. That one really wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> no. Was it better than La Machete? <laughs> La Machete <laughs> kills. It was better than <laughs> that. Was a disappointing Simon Pegg. Uh, Je- Jeff, what's your number one? Uh, is it Twelve Monkeys. Uh, it was Twelve Monkeys. Okay. Uh, my number one was Zombie Lane. A, a, a quick honorable mention. Uh, oh. Quick, I got uh, Mad Max. All Mad Max series. Okay. Matrix. Uh, Matrix. Clockwork Orange. I thought about Clockwork Orange. That was good. Road Fla- Warrior. Flash Gordon. Flash. Ah. Uh, then uh, Night of the Comet. <laughs> <laughs> it is such a bad movie. That's a good cheesy eighties movie. But oh, it, right. I, so bad. It was so bad. But I remember it was. I was young, and it just kind of stuck with me. Okay. Escape it, from New York. Terminator. Escape from L.A.? No. no. Do you no. think... And I'm not trying to be a smart ass. You're like, do you think anybody in the new... Like, the younger generation knows what Escape from New York is anymore? Yes. Or L.A.? Do, you, do they? Oh, they're going to remake it in a yeah, couple it's, years. It's cults. It's it's, it's cult, and... John hips, Carpenter. Hipsters, I think, mm-hmm. really love it. Love I, it. I see people raving about it all the time. And I, I never particularly cared for the movie, so I'm like, eh. But a lot of people are going off on it who are, you know, in their... 20s to early 30s. And I've talked about this before. I always like, see, like, it intrigues me to see, like, what holds up from our generation to the next generation. You know, like, we were talking about John Candy. Does anybody even know who he is anymore? Yeah, he was in Summer Rental. Thank you. <laughs> we know it, but does the next generation... Die Hard. Die Hard represents our generation. Oh, God. Cool Runnings, right? <laughs> cool Runnings! <laughs> uh, let's see. We got oh, some listener feedback. Well, I had to- one more. It was oh, sorry. Uh, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. <laughs> By definition. Yes, it is. <laughs> Never said our world. Yes. I had uh, some honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. I had uh, Logan's Run. Yeah, I don't know if it holds up anymore, though. That is what getting a... That's going to get a remake. remake. They, They're well, remaking well, it. They've been talking about yeah. it for a while. I think we talked about that on like our second episode. Brian Singer's been trying to remake mm-hmm. that for years. It on uh, It's getting uh, bumped up on uh, what the Hollywood Exchange. Is it? Oh. Yes. It's, All right. it's being bought. Is it higher yeah. than Rebel Wilson? 
No, I don't think so. Okay. But I, you can't get higher than that. That's true. Than that. <laughs> so, uh, Hunger Games, first movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I Am Legend. The Omega Man. Omega Last Man, Man on Earth. Earth. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, whichever one you want from that story. <laughs> whichever version of that book you want to... <laughs> I did like uh, my own bunch. I did think about um, Planet of the Apes, the one with James Franco. I really did like that one because um, it is post-apocalyptic at the end. Well, it's sure. the actual apocalypse. Yes. Uh, let's see here. We had some uh, Jen Adams. Uh, thanks, Jen. We had uh, number five, The Road. Uh, number four, Shivers. I oh, completely forgot about oh, that. Oh, damn. I want to put that. <laughs> the shock value alone puts this on my list. I mean, getting raped to death by a zombie. What a way to go. Uh, number three, Blindness. I forgot all about that movie, too. Do you remember that? That's a good one, too. Uh, number two, Resident Evil. Pretty much any of them. Good movie. Uh, they're all fantastic, except for maybe the final chapter. It felt a bit rushed. Uh, that's from Paul uh, Thomas Anderson. I'll just let you go. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> n- number one, uh, Night of the Living Dead, or pretty much any Romero movie. That man was a god. Not the City of Zombies or whatever that one was. That was a rough run. Uh, Picking Only Five was tough. So That's why you hobby it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I had 19 men on my list. <laughs> uh, from Doug, number one fan, Jurassic World. That movie can make $600 million and the apocalypse is upon us. Of course. Uh, from the DVD Lowdown. Hey, guys. At the Lowdown. L-O-W-E. Down. So uh, is that all about Rob Lowe? Yes. Okay. No, uh, Chad. Oh. It actually Chad. is Chad Lowe talking about Rob Lowe. Uh, talking uh, about his marriage <laughs> to Hillary Swank. <laughs> She's a girl, you know. Uh, number five, The Road. Uh, number four, Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, three, Damnation Alley. Two, The Book of Eli. And one, The Road Warrior. Oh, Animal and Hawk. Uh, from Besotted Geek. <laughs> <laughs> the Road Warriors stole their plot exactly from Waterworld. Oh, Waterworld, another great film. <laughs> 20 years earlier. <laughs> Exxon Valdez. Uh, number five, After the Apocalypse. Number four, A.E. Apocalypse Earth. Number three, Alien Apocalypse. Number two, X-Men colon Apocalypse. Nope. Number one, Apocalypse Now. <laughs> X-Men Apocalypse should not be on any top five list. And but, unless you're going strict, they have to be Apocalypse movies, so Apocalypse has to appear in the top No, list. that still would not be in the top five Apocalypse movies. Um, it was top five favorite, not best. That's true. Favorite. That's true. Yeah, you have Armageddon on your list, so you can't talk. <laughs> no, good point. <laughs> um, from Meow God, my favorite is Deep Impact. See? Just as bad as Armageddon. Much better than Armageddon. Makes me cry each time I see the mom giving up. Uh, let's see, from Chris Richardson, 365 Flicks Buddies, uh, 28 Days Later, The Girl with All the Gifts. Don't know that one. Mm. World War Z, uh, Terminator. Oh, wait, wait, this is from Chris. Yeah. World War Z. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Terminator 2, Colon Judgment Day. Number one, Waterworld. Well, we can, we can throw that in the rubbish bin. <laughs> uh, let's see. From Pittsburgh Nerd, the Omega Man, Snowpiercer. I forgot about Snowpiercer. I did, too. Chris Evans. I didn't, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, number three, Planet of the Apes, the original. Uh, number two, The Book of Eli. And number one, he hobied it, the Mad Max series. So thanks, everybody, for uh, your picks this week. Scab the original Jack. Mad Max series? Mm-hmm. Like all four of the movies in the Mad Max series. Ain't we a Welcome bear. to Thunderdome, bitch. Ain't we a bear? <laughs> Including the remake? I don't know. Reboot? It's in there. I don't know. Fury Road? I think it includes it, yes. Well, what's the reboot? Fury Road is the that's reboot. Not a, that's not a reboot, is it? Well, it's, it's different characters. Reimagining. Yeah. Yeah, it's different characters. It's probably the best of the series, though. <laughs> that's some awesome action scenes. I think that it has got, an awesome cinematography and I, plot. I don't think it's Charlie Theron. Mm, Charlie. But we all know the best of them all is Thunderdome because it's got Tina, Tina Turner. Turner. Yep. Because we don't need another hero. And Master Blaster. <laughs> we don't have to find the way home. Bad idea of the week. All we want to get beyond. Number 282. Stealing a car at the Olympics. Really? 202? 282. 282. Eh, okay. There's worse things. There's worse things. There's worse things you can do. Number 281. Being Ryan Lochte. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Uh, Scab Jeff, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Good job on your Oscars. Good job. 
And uh, Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Addendum. Titles for the show. What, Jeff, what you got? I got, they took the pit out. I like that. <laughs> I got an inferior the arrival. <laughs> inferior of the arrival. I have nothing on that page. Uh, you do have a gherkin. It's <laughs> uh, not the first time we've had a gherkin. Uh, that's her age, not her name. <laughs> 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 Uh, the Rosie Lopez Show, <laughs> and Guillermo del Husqvarna. <laughs> I have plot is in the title. Uh, just as good as Bitcoin. Ooh. Dear Car Trunk. <laughs> I did like that one. Uh, Half Off Tux, and Rosie Lopez. <laughs> Rosie Lopez Show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the Rosie Lopez Show? Anybody else? I have Dying Like the Old Man on Up. <laughs> uh, 20 tuxes for Alice and Janney <laughs> uh, Can somebody send us some Pez <laughs> That's uh, more of a request I, than I, I like that one <laughs> With skid marks <laughs> <laughs> It's where all my stuff is <laughs> One night in Remy <laughs> <laughs> And dildos, farts, and car thefts I don't think we can do that one <laughs> I do like the where my stuff is. <laughs> where my stuff is. <laughs> like one night in Remy. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff one actually made me just die laughing for about five minutes. <laughs> Why don't you want the world to die? It's where all my stuff is. Where all my stuff is. I do like the twenty taxes for uh, Anderson, Alice and Janney. Yes. Yeah. No, no. The where my stuff is. Wasn't that like from Guardians of the Galaxy? Or, well, something. Else. It is, but I completely or, forgot. Well, where I don't want the 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 universe to end because I'm one of the people that live live in it. Yes, live in it. Yes. Yeah. Live in it. That's where my stuff is. Uh, so, what's our option? What's our picks? Uh, I do like the Rosie Lopez show. The Rosie Lopez show. I do like I I do, skid marks. I skid marks. Skid, skid marks. marks. Although I do like somebody says some Pez. I mean, that's pretty shameless, <laughs> that's pretty shameless advertising. <laughs> Someone send us Pez it is. All right. Someone send us Pez with skid marks. <laughs> oh, no.